Welcome to Zero Page Homebrew, your best source for the newest Atari games and Erlen. And, oh my goodness, what do we have today? We're going to be playing a 2600 game, but that's later. First, we're going to be talking with the legend, the legend, the man, <laughs> John Van Risen of hero fame and now alien abduction fame. Uh, but first, before we get to him, we're going to thank our Twitch subscribers who help support the show. But we will be jumping right into John right after that. So very excited about today's guest. Oh, oh yeah. my goodness. Uh, I want to thank the Twitch subscribers 8 Bit Poe, Down the Fur, Andrew, Atari Arms, Car Coder, Atari 800 XL Rules, Atari 74, Atari Age, BR Pocock, Bruno Stacks, Captain Classic, Charles Stone, Matt, Charles Wheel, and Chitlala, Cubanismo, Cyrano Rebo, Dan, ABC, Dave, M, A, Z, Drexel, Dr. Mookows, E. Anchowitz, Gamma Dev, Glenn, Main, Great Offender, Ground Trooper, Azure, H O J two three zero nine Ivory Tower Collections, Don, Johnny W C, Computer Coder, Carl G. Karakak, Croco 2600, Developer. Lambda Express, Mandy Pacific, T, Mark Yannis, Mark Spacing, Melatari, Mick Muse, Mike Soul, Mike Latow, Miss Nomer, Miss Command, MK Smith, Mr. Fix, Neo Media, Nostalgic, 26 Pseudographics, Coog, 2600 R. Anschwitz, Rendered Ghost, Repentless Video, Reverend Tooley, Ricardo Pim, Six Sweet, Smitty B, 7800, Spiceware, Spinley, S. Ramirez, The D Train, Tiki Dan K, Trek, MD, Tweeny, Vexor X, Vintage Game Memories, Vitoko, VG Double Damned, X Gen X, and Zombie Alice. And if you'd like to support the show, like Mad Max just did. Yeah, so Mad we, Max 2069. <laughs> so we can bring you awesome things like our show today. Uh, just hit subscribe. And uh, you can help support uh, this cat as well. Our this cat guy. Atari. That's really why we're here. That's right. It's all about the cat. It's all about Atari. That's right. <laughs> That's right. So I'm going to give you a headset so Perfect. we can listen to our guest. Um, Which one is this? Is the left or the right? So you get the left and I get the right so we can hear each other. Hey, Tiki Dan, we've got Dan Kitchen in the chat. That is excellent. Buddy of John's. And uh, I think we're pretty much good to go. Are yeah. you ready to go? I'm ready to go. Okay. Let's do this. Now is the time. Now is the time. So I would like to welcome to Zero Page Homebrew, a legendary developer and creator of the revered Activision game Hero, H-E-R-O, plus scores of other games for platforms such as Apple II, Atari 8-Bit, Atari 7800, C64, NES, SNES, and Game Boy, whose new game, uh, uh, new Atari 2600 game, Alien Abduction, brings him back to the enduring console that we all love after 40 years. Incredible. Please... Welcome to ZPH, John Van Risen. Welcome, John. Thank you so Hi. much for being here. <laughs> it's, it's an absolute pleasure and an honor to have you on the show. Uh, as such a, a person of high esteem, making one of the most revered games on the Atari 2600, topping so many charts of best games ever made for the system. Wow. Well, thank you for that fantastic introduction. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're completely deserving of it. And I'm sure everybody who's watching, who is tuned in to uh, to hear you speak, uh, will 100% uh, agree with me as well. So we've got a, a host of questions spanning from before you were programming all the way right up to date so that uh, people can get a good uh, idea of what you've done and what got you to where you are today. Yeah, it's a wild ride. <laughs> <laughs> yep, people are saying hi, people are saying thanks for Hero. So let's just start right at the very beginning. Very, very beginning. What, what was your introduction to computers and computer gaming itself? So I went to college for electrical engineering because I liked electronic gadgets. And you could, you know, you would get a, you could get a summer job related to your field and you'd get college credit for it. So I would apply for, for jobs to the, you know, where I could do something related to that. And uh, the one, w one job I got was at a place where Gary Kitchen was making handheld games with LED lights. So like Gary oh. Kitchen used to, program like an LED game 
like he made like a pinball game, he made a pool game for yeah. Parker Brothers. And then yeah, I, a very very I, cool uh, pinball game. Yeah, and what I did there was I would actually wired prototypes of the crazy things they were inventing. <laughs> it was pretty interesting. Oh, nice. So, so, so then get so then uh, Gary Kitchen would uh, reverse engineered the Atari Twenty Six Hundred in that job. A yeah. And then when I graduated, I got you know a boring boring engineering job <clears throat> and he called me up and said that he had <laughs> left that company and he's he started this company and uh to make apple II games and he and he had got a contract to do that and that he was going to make atari 2600 donkey Kong in his new company yes that's so, that's a pretty so, big deal <laughs> so, so he told me that if i bought a computer and figured out how to program a game that he would hire me. So I bought an Apple II computer, and when I would get home from my job, I would figure out how to program it, and I wrote a program to move you know, a plane or something across the screen, and then I showed it to him, and he was impressed and said, well, I'll give you a job. But then I had to go <laughs> explain to wow. my father that I was went to college and got this high paying engineering job, and I was now going to quit and go work in Gary Kitchen's basement making games for royalties. <laughs> so it didn't really go over well with my father, but I did it anyway. <laughs> so before Gary, before Gary Kitchen asked you to go buy a computer, <laughs> you had never done programming before? Oh, no, I had done programming. So I, uh, okay. I programmed in college. So in college, okay. it, it, one of the universities I went to was so ridiculous that my first programming class, you went in and you typed on a teletype machine and it, it would punch holes in cards. And then you'd take a big stack of cards <laughs> yeah. over to this window and hand it to the people and they, and then they would run your program. Yeah. So, yeah. And then I, and then I did really strange programming, uh, in my, my first job, uh, at a college where they, they told me they wanted me to change the firmware for some of these electronic devices that they device that they sold and they you know and it was written in assembly language and you know they had these instructions of what they wanted changed and what I do it and what could I do it and I was like yeah I can do it so I said where's the computer and they said there isn't one and I'm like what what do you, what do you mean there isn't one and they, and so they come walking over to my desk and they put down a notebook and then an EEPROM programmer device, and they put down some blank ROMs and a ROM that was already burned with some code. And I opened up the notebook, and someone had written an assembly language program on the left column, and on the right column, by <laughs> hand, they converted it to opcodes, you know, hexadecimal numbers, oh. on, the, on the right side. Oh. And I had to go through this book <laughs> and figure out how, to, how the program worked and then change it to make it do something else. It was quite challenging. So wow. <laughs> so, so what was programming on paper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. So so you know, Apple II computer was pretty sophisticated for compared to the, <laughs> my previous experiences. Yeah, a keyboard and a and a monitor. That's that's luxury at that point, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Like, well, it's pretty amazing what changed in one person's lifetime. I mean, you know. You, your first show oh. programming is hand, hand assembling code in a notebook, you know, it's pretty strange. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. The, the advancement of technology during that, that period of time from like the sixties to the eighties and nineties was just so accelerated that it's unbelievable. Like, like you're saying yourself, you're going from writing on a piece of paper programming to, you know, uh, programming directly onto the computer itself. Oh, it's, well, right. oh my goodness. And then, right, and, then the, and then the same thing happened in the art side of it, in games, like the, you know, when I was like in yeah. 2600 games, I had no tool to draw things. I, you'd get out graph paper and draw the sprite on graph paper and convert it into accessible numbers in your head and upside down in a yeah. table. <laughs> Upside down, yeah, of course. So Mad Max in the chat says, if the paper crashes, you know you have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
So, so how did you get from um, the Apple II to programming uh, the 2600? Because you said with Gary, he had you um, start programming on the Apple II while he was programming uh, Donkey Kong for the 2600. Right, so, so I made, I worked on three games in his basement. They were for Hayden uh, Software Publisher, which is a book publisher that started selling PC games, you know, computer games. So, yep. so I made a game called Kamikaze. Uh, <laughs> I made a, a Space Shuttle Intercept was another one. And then I co-authored one with Gary Kitchen where it was about a, a bellhop riding around in elevators. Yeah, yeah. Right. So then, so then Gary Kitchen obviously was like really successful with making Donkey Kong, which, and he was smart enough to know yeah. that other people would be interested in his skills. So he went and shopped us around to Atari and to Activision. Right. So you know, yeah. he flew out to California and said, "Well, I got this company and these these guys, and I did this, and you know." Yeah. So, um, so they offered job. What? Yeah. So, what was the next step? What was the 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 first Atari game that you started working on then? And wh for which company? Would did did Atari bite at all, or was was it Activision? No, he, no, he, he 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 decided not to go to Activision. So we all or to Atari. So so because. Um, you know, the Activision was more into making, you know, more, more uh, elaborate games or whatever. They were like high regarded or whatever their skills. <clears throat> so he decided yeah. Activision and then Activision came out and met us all in his basement. And then <laughs> and then they sent Federal Express uh, to our houses with offer letters to, you know, uh, work for Activision and we're going to open up the East Coast Design Center and hire all of you. Uh, they, yeah. Yeah, and then and then how they worked was really interesting. It was, it, they they literally just said, well, you know, here's all here's the equipment, here's your office, here's your cubicle, make a game, and tell us when it's done. Like there was no deadlines, and they just like trusted you and said, make the best game you could make, <laughs> and and take however long it takes to make it, which is. Pretty strange. <laughs> like, well, nobody works like that, you know. <laughs> it sounds like an awesome environment yeah. to work oh. in because you you were able to put in the amount of work to make a good game rather than whatever the deadline. Well, it's done now because we have to ship it for Christmas, right? Yeah, 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 right, right. That or yeah, yeah, that or or you know, some license is hot. Like the whole thing with ET, where that guy made a game in six weeks. Right. Like, you know. Yeah. Right. So. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, brutal right. yeah i mean i mean it, 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 it's like amazing what those it, it is amazing what those people who were under the time constraints like with pac-man and uh, uh with you know raiders of the lost ark or et were able to put out in that short amount of time oh, but yeah. Oh, yeah, you know amazing. you look at the but you look at the activision side of things and you and you just you realize that these people put in their heart and soul and work into it, and you could see the end result just shining through on the on the covers and the boxes, on the the graphics in in the games, the gameplay itself. Um, it was it was night and day, really. Yeah, yeah, but it was, it was because they, it was like you owned it. You know, they were like you make up whatever you want and go do it, and other other people would come and look at your work and talk to you about it. But it wasn't like somebody was telling you what to do. They just let you do it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I was like yeah. some twenty-year-old kid, I was amazed that they would let me do it. You know, but, <laughs> and it, and it sounds almost like you would be trying to impress your other coworkers uh, with what you were making and trying to. Was there a one-upmanship within Activision because you would see, oh my God, look what uh, David Crane did with you know this game or that game. Oh yeah, well, there, so there was the senior designer. So, you know, obviously the founders were all senior designers, and then there was then they hired yeah. other people, and then if they made a hit game, then they would become a senior designer. And, and so, <laughs> you know, so in the end, you had in the end you 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 had to answer to the senior designers because they would like review your game when it was 
when it was done, but it wasn't right. They, like they would just give you some feedback while you were working on it. Right. <laughs> and, and in the notes you passed me, you, you were working on a different game, Cosmic Commuter, before you were uh, working on Hero. Um, but Cosmic Commuter came out after. So was you did you bring Cosmic Commuter to the, the heads of Activision and they went, uh, it's not quite ready? Maybe tell us a story about that. Um, so, you know, when I was working on it, they were telling me that, you know, I was doing a good job on it technically, you know, like following their... Um, you know, their high standards for the graphics and doing tricks that other people aren't doing and that sort of stuff. But then at the end, you know, and it, and it had a completely different name. Like it was in the roster to be put out. It was called Astro Bus. And <laughs> then when it got yeah. and then when it got to the end, they, they said uh, it didn't make the cut. So then I was like, oh, now what happens? Mm. Am I going to get fired? And, you know, and they just said <laughs> and they just said. Go make another game. Uh, very nice. <laughs> I mean, that's right. Because they obviously recognized your talent, and they weren't like, "Oh, you're not, you're not good enough to work here." They hired you. They're like, "Well, you know, they they probably have like they looked at all the games. Like, how many do we want to release in this quarter? We'll take the top four or whatever, and then they'd send everybody back to the drawing board for the yeah, f to yeah, make more games, yeah, kind of." I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not really sure, but it seemed like it was also at the timing of the beginning of the video game crash, because Hero came out yeah. in the peak, in the right smack in the middle of the video game crash. So I'm not sure whether that had something to do with it. Maybe it probably did. Oh. You know, where stores are buying less or who knows. Yeah. Um, so, so anyway, but, but I was crushed. I mean, you know, I, like, I got this <laughs> job. I did it. I made the thing. I figured out the toy 2600 and rejected so it was it was pretty hard, <laughs> hard to take that would be but that it, would be crushing but the result was you making hero which i'm sure you're very happy <laughs> with them sending you back to the drawing board to start from scratch yeah well it was interesting because the rejection like actually inspired me what that game is where I went and I said, well, you know, in the last game, I was just like all into this, oh, what's it look like? And, you know, you know, is everything all pixel perfect or whatever? And, and then when I went and then I was like, oh, geez. And then in the end, the games they didn't think it was all that much fun. They weren't like complaining about like what it did or what it looked like or something. So when I did Hero, right. I was just like laser focused on it. All I care about is the play. Like I, like I made up the story of what it was about after I made the play. <laughs> so, yeah yeah so like i did it the reverse exactly. of what i did on the other game I, with the other game i made the graphics you know do something cool the lunar lander comes down and busts apart and then you know made up a game around that where with hero i did the opposite i did i made up the graphics and the story after i figured out gameplay that i thought would be fun <laughs> yeah i i mean i guess that's a result of them s saying maybe like um Oh, the gameplay is not good enough. So you concentrate on the gameplay first, which I think, and I and I've done surveys on the show. Everybody agrees, gameplay is number one because once you're in in the game, you're playing the game. The sound fades away a bit. The graphics fades away a bit. It's all about the controls and the fun of it and the gameplay of it. Yeah, yeah, right. Well, and that's what some. And that to this day I, I always thought was mysterious where you know so with company like activision or magic they would they would you know go nuts on making it like you know way more elaborate looking than anybody else's game but then i would you know, look at the top 10 charts and like some other company could make something that looked like really horrible and flicker <laughs> and double line resolution and all these like like you know, these like that that a comb thing going up and down the left side of right. the screen and 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 their game was a hit and i was like well you know i guess it's all about <laughs> play really if it isn't if it isn't fun you know nothing matters i guess and, uh, the rest of it. yeah that's that's very true you, yeah you can make it look as good as you want but i but in that fact activision games were fun and looked amazing so yeah, they yeah. were yeah all right batting a thousand double, <laughs> double whammy yeah um 
Was there a point in the development of Hero where you thought, wow, I, I really have something here that nobody's really done before? Because it was fairly innovative with, it was a platformer, but you could move in all directions. Uh, it was very, very open, it felt. Uh, yeah, but that was, that goes back to that graphic thing. It was, it was, oh, well, I could make it that you're going around moving through all, all these different screens, but they, but they don't look like much. They're just big, big colored squares, right? Like, like the room <laughs> you're in doesn't, doesn't look like anything compared to like, you know, pitfalls, trees and, you know, you know, right. color tabled and, you know, the other games were red, like, you know the the sunset or the sunrise in the background with the mountains. Oh, I had right. Like none of that because I was just I was just going for play, so I think that's why I, I let that go. That it made me free to go <laughs> that direction. <laughs> yeah, it was it was fairly unique in that aspect where a lot of other Activision games had, you know, certain things that were constants like you said the sunsets always at the top and <laughs> yeah, yeah. the games the games moved moved to the left or always to the right or something right so you could always have the sunset at the top and and yours well you really couldn't because you could move anywhere on the screen but that was the big draw of it um almost revolutionary where you if it felt exploratory it felt bigger than maybe it actually was but you it it felt like you could move anywhere. I, yeah, I, I, I think that was a big draw to it. I, I read a review, uh, uh, watched a review of it from a guy who it's um, I forget the name of the company, but Atari owns them now. Uh, where they yeah. uh, develop uh, those Atari Fifty games, and uh, Mike right. Mika, I think his name was, and he said, and, and, right. yep. and he posted something online about it, and his, and his comment was is that it felt like. There were no limitations that like it <laughs> like that other 2600 games felt like oh you know they can't do this or they can't do that so the the yep. game felt restricted or something but he says that like even today you play it it's not like you felt like uh somebody was fighting the limitations of the machine because you could it didn't feel that way which is pretty interesting i guess Oh but yeah. I didn't realize yeah. I was and doing it, anything. It... I didn't do realize I was doing anything <laughs> amazing. Other other than the my coworkers, they would come up and play it all the time and, and give me positive feedback. That was great. And they, you know, I I did ideas from them and put them in there or rip things out that people didn't like. You know, it's, it really wasn't like a one man thing. You know, it, because the other people would do it. Right. Yeah, very collaborative effort. Um, I guess working in an office full of full of programmers, you go look at their game, they'd come look at your game. Right. Suggestions would fly back and forth. Now, um, it, your game was released post crash, during crash, around that time. Were were you feeling it, or were you cognizant of that happening while you were programming the game, or were you insulated? from that and you were just making your game and then after it came out you're like wow this isn't selling like it the other games were what's your, what's going your, on your, your audio your 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 audio your audio just cut out but i'm assuming you're asking me whether i was aware of the crashes going on yeah while you put out your game like you put out your game and it didn't it didn't sell like the the millions that uh pre-crash were pre pre-crash games were Okay, so I had no idea that the crash was going on when I was making that game. And I made that game, and it, it was like, oh, now they're going to publish this one. And I was like, wow, it's wild. And then I go to a, a consumer electronics show, and Jim Levy, who's the CEO of, of Activision in this meet, company meeting thing, holds up this billboard chart, which I have a picture of it up there on the wall. This billboard chart. <laughs> and... and my game was number seven in the country and i was like wow this is wild you know so i thought like you know <laughs> this is fantastic but it, was, yeah. it wasn't until later that i i figured out that oh the video game business is crashing you know which were like within so like within a year it was they were you know they were literally, literally told me don't make a game like i started a new game uh. after hero and they came and they said like oh video games uh, you know it's like a fad people want home computer experiences now so you know 
stop that game you're making and make something interesting for a Commodore 64. That's not a game. So, you know, real quickly, I figured out the crash was pretty serious. But... <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, I'm not sure. Is it is it a fad? Video games? I think I think they're sticking around. You yeah. know, I think they might yeah, they still some, be here. Yeah, they have a bit of power here, now. Here yeah, taken over there. long, taken over movies in terms of revenue. So I I, don't, I think the fad thing is passed. Yeah. Oh well, yeah, but I can I can remember going to CES and like literally there were executives laughing at the Nintendo booth in 1985. Like oh, they're like, oh, oh, like what are those guys doing? Like don't they know that that that's like over? You know, like everybody's computers. <laughs> it's weird. Oh my god, <laughs> that is crazy. Um, so I've got uh, some questions uh, from the audience. Bef like I, I put out the call for questions, and um, Spiceware asks uh, here or says, "Hero's an awesome game. Have you seen the recent Vic Twenty port of Hero?" I found it quite faithful to the original, especially in, especially in light of the Vic's hardware limitations. Everything's character-based, no hardware sprites. And this was put out in 2022. Yeah, I watched, so the, I said, video. I watched the video of it. It was, it was really well done. It was interesting that there was like certain things that, the, that, the, that they couldn't do because of their technology like the like the water the water didn't go all the way across the bottom of the screen. and then right and then there were they couldn't make like the whole screen be like three shades of of one color so it would be like two colors and another <laughs> color it, it was pretty interesting right? possibly why they didn't release it for the Vic 20 back when <laughs> it was uh, it was coming out, uh, probably because of those limitations. And it took, you know, 40 years for somebody to be able to figure it out. Um, and, and there was also um, another version. You might have been aware of this one. I'm not sure if you keep up with it. It was an Amstrad CPC version that uh, came out in 2005. Um, oh, my God. Sorry. Um, that looks pretty good as well. Oh yeah, that does look good. Yeah. So, so what do you think of, of these people who are, you know, so dedicated and, and love the legacy of hero that they'd, you know, spend, you know, hundreds of hours of their own time to give away um versions versions of hero yeah I, I i think it's i think it's really cool i mean i'm like flattered that somebody did that did that you know that that something i made would inspire somebody to put in that much effort to make one <laughs> so pretty <laughs> amazing but it does get strange when you know because when i worked at activision i had to sign like all these documents of you know you own you know, my name and likeness and, the, you know, anything I create in this place or whatever. So it does get strange when somebody's right. doing that and then they're selling it because then that's between them and Activision and it has nothing to do with me, you know, but and laws or whatever. So that part gets strange, but I think it's cool. Yeah, lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> lawyers mess everything up, mess all the fun up, right? <laughs> um, so Jeremy Holloway... Um, asks this question. Uh, it's a, a bit more technical question, but um, I hope you can ask him if he has any insight on why Activision didn't suggest using DPC in Hero on the 2600 version. It certainly boggles my mind that they didn't use the chip in anything else after Pitfall 2. Yes. So maybe the decision on, on what what kind of hardware that you were using in Hero when the DPC chip that uh, David Crane developed um, wasn't used in anything in Activision after that. Was it a cost savings thing or was it nobody else knew how to develop for the DPC chip except David? Well, I knew that he was working on it, but it wasn't like they, they offered it to, to me to use it and I and I also didn't get a very big cartridge like uh, you know so you know you know Alan Miller or David Grango to go to make some game they can convince man 
is meant to make an expensive 16 gay cartridge or something but somebody like me that I, I didn't get that i got like you know 4k or you know, you know, so, so, so so i wasn't offered yeah. anything like that yeah and dan in the then, you know, uh dan kitchen in they, the chat said they, they dpc was public expensive public oh, oh yeah right just like the bigger roms were expensive right yeah yeah that makes sense <laughs> But I was like a junior guy, and my first game failed. So why would they offer me their latest technology? <laughs> <laughs> so maybe talk a little bit about um, the the games you developed after um, leaving Activision and uh, working on other consoles. What what uh, what was the experience like working on more and more advanced consoles? Um, okay, so there was this part in between there that was really strange where uh, Gary Kitchen was uh, hired as a consultant to the, the David Sarnoff Research Center in Princeton, which basically, you know, this is this a research lab where they like, you know, invented things like color television and the VCR and LCD displays and things like that. <laughs> and they were basically wow. in 1985, they were making what? If I took you back in time and showed it to you, you'd go, wow, they were making a PlayStation 10 years before a PlayStation came out. So wow. it was a consumer device. We put a CD-ROM in it. It could do 3D rendering wow. and all that. And so they hired him to work on a pilot, one of the pilot applications they were making to sell this whole thing to you know, have it be marketed. And he, so he was working on a flight simulator. And so they wrote this, you know, like really smart guys from Princeton, Valley Victorian computer science, wrote a 3D renderer in a high level language C. It was high level back then. And it was ridiculously <laughs> slow. And so because I had worked on a, uh, a Commodore 64 game where I wrote my own 3D wireframe renderer for, for a game uh, for the Commodore 64, which was Absolute Entertainment's first first game that they published. Then, yeah. so then Gary's like, oh, yeah. well, you know, maybe John can come down here and, and fix this for you. <laughs> so I got sucked into it and I had to go to Princeton and then, and take somebody's extremely complicated 3D renderer that was written in C and figure out how to make it go faster. So they, so they did like a test where they had me, the guy, changed his code so that he wasn't drawing the lines and he would call my code an assembly language and I draw the line and uh, do the algorithm of the line and give it back to him. And I think it like doubled or tripled the speed of the renderer just changing that one that one algorithm. So then wow. they had me work, working on that for a pretty long time where it was pretty intense because like the math was above my head I, like I had just I read like one book in 3D rendering and made one game with so you know simple wireframe stuff in 3D and all of a sudden I'm I'm like oh, okay I, I just got sent to the future of the PlayStation and I'm trying to working on the performance to the renderer of the PlayStation so it was pretty that was pretty intense <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no kidding. It's like here, work on something that somebody has full knowledge of in C, and you do better than them, and make speed up their their program. It's like, oh boy, okay. <laughs> well, right, and then it angered the the programmers who were making it. They hated me because of that. <laughs> like, they wanted nothing to do with me. They like, I actually, I changed one day. I got the source code, and up at the top, they, you know, you type in, and you know, the, what this is. Oh, this is the DVI flight simulator copyrighted, you know, RCA or whatever. They changed it to yeah. the DVI REN duh, uh, <laughs> REN duh, like duh. It's not a, not a renderer, a REN duh. Because, a REN duh. Because they, because, oh my God. So they thought like I was butchering their code by changing it into crazy <laughs> assembly language performance algorithm. They, they, that's, that's obviously the wrong attitude to take. They should be very happy of a collaboration and learn from what you've shown them. But, uh, 
That's that's terrible when when you work with other people like that and and they <laughs> take offense to making the the product that their name is on better. But ego is a yeah ego a powerful yeah it's <laughs> powerful thing in very some people's powerful. lives. Um, yeah. I have some uh, questions about games that were developed at Activision that people have found prototypes of, and they were were just put a shot a shot in the dark out for you and i did pass these to you beforehand so you could take a look at them there's two prototypes that they're like yeah. we don't know yeah, who yeah. made them we don't know where they came from we know they're activision and i'm just going to put them up on the screen for people and i and i did send them to you beforehand one is a blocks shifting game uh they don't even know the name of it um and and you said you're not sure who made this? So was there a lot of games like this in development, um, being put on cartridge that people were playing around with and testing? Right. So, you know, the longer I worked there, you know, there were, I think there were maybe like six people making games or something. And then they hired us, which was like a group of four. And then it, they just started hiring more and more and more people. And there were like there was like a group in Boston and a group in in uh, you know our group in the East Coast. And then the, the California one was getting bigger. So there was like a lot of developers. So I wouldn't have been aware of <laughs> of a lot of things. Like I was aware of like what was going on in the in our office and in the Boston office. So this I'm guessing this must have been done in the California office because I never saw that. Right. And it doesn't say where it was found. It's just a salvage yard in 1998 by a guy named Ben. It didn't say what city. So it might have been in an area that was where you weren't developing, right? Right. So you and, don't even, know, was what, this you other don't even one. know what state they found it in? Yeah. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't say. No. It just gives the name of the person, which is unfortunate. But maybe they didn't think, oh, the location wouldn't have mattered. But obviously it it does matter where these prototypes were found because they probably wouldn't float too far away until they right. were like found by an Atari collector, right? Well, right. Well, right. There was some employee would take it home with them and, you know, play it on their Atari yeah. at home. Or they, 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 get, they actually had like, a, you know, uh, what was sophisticated at the time were internet connections to our home so that when we were at home, we could, we could program at night on a terminal in our house. We actually got a development system in right. our house. Right. And, and there's another one called Hardhead, and, and obviously you didn't know who made this as well. Uh, found by the same guy, so obviously in whatever area you weren't in. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Uh... Oh, another one, another copy appeared in a U in the UK. So I guess they do travel around a little bit. It says there, interesting, very very interesting. Yeah, well, the UK they they, they brought a guy from the U UK to the New Jersey office when they were making the ports of Hero. Where they took Hero and ported it to Apple and Commodore and right. fifty two hundred and whatever. Yeah, they were, they hired some company in the, in the UK to do the Commodore version. They brought him to the office. For oh, me. really? Yeah, because uh, the C64 is very popular in Europe, so that makes a lot of sense. Like, maybe they developed the PAL version first and then the NTSC later. Right. Um, there's a question in the chat from Nostalgic. Was it a deliberate decision or an accident with Hero that the more difficult path is almost always the correct one? And I noticed that almost right away when I first started playing Hero. It's like, go for the hard path. Always go the opposite side. Always kill the thing. Always use the dynamite to blow up the wall because that's the way to go. Yeah, 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 right. I was like, like, you know, it, it's not obvious like how you get you know in and out of rooms or whatever, you know. So, you know, I was trying to fool you. <laughs> but, but, but it's but it's learnable. Yes. Yeah. And, and after a while, you kind of get it into your head. It's like, OK, if I go down that side, that's definitely where the light is going to be. And it's going to turn out, put me in the dark. So I'm going to go on this side. Always hug the left wall because the lights are always on the right. So you you get into the mentality of hero after playing it for a while, which which is fun because then you get really, really good at it. And you don't have to worry about these these things that would trip you up. 
Yeah, right. And then it all comes down to your reflexes because you know you know the tricks <laughs> yes. of which way to go. Yeah. And and I mean, we'll get into reflexes later with alien abduction because that just takes it to the next level. It's it's <laughs> it's awesome. Um, and and speaking of controls, uh, Thomas didn't ask a question per se, but was there some talk about the hero controls already? Because something that really trips me up on hero, and I, and I have heard it from other people, is the pause, the pause when you change direction um, from uh, falling down to going back up. There's like this slight pause that 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 really messes with me. Right. So. Right. Right. Nobody. Nobody ever gave me negative feedback on that, and I would, and I, I think it was because like most of the time you're falling, and so the reason that we. Yeah, was in there was to make it easier to hover above the river. Okay. The reason that that de delay is in there is that it makes hovering above the river easier, so that octopus doesn't grab you. Because in the rest of the game, right. you're just like, yeah, I'm free falling. What do I care what what up does? You know, and I'm going right. I'm going. To, and so I, I had no idea that it bothered people. Nobody gave me that feedback. <laughs> <laughs> it it adds challenge. Let's say. <laughs> Yeah, but it is it is useful for for going but, but, under but things. That, that's I for heard, sure. Heard that feedback. And, yeah, yeah. Oh, go ahead. It's like my audio is messing up on me. Oh, okay. Um, so speaking of these um prototypes that were found, um. Were there any games that uh, you have from the Activision days for the 2600 that were unreleased or unfinished that you were working on that, you know, that you maybe want to finish or uh, don't want to finish as well? Yeah, I have. I had a whole, a whole bunch of things like that up in my attic and um, like, oh, maybe two years ago, I donated it all to the National Video Game Museum. So I had cartridges okay. of games that, like the game I was making when they told me to not make games anymore, or <laughs> videotapes of that that crazy flight simulator, you know, futuristic PlayStation in the past project, and so so I donated <laughs> all that stuff, and I had like, um, you know, uh, Nintendo cartridges that I cut apart with an exacto knife and rewired them to a ROM emulator, so I could. So, <laughs> So, so I could make a, a Nintendo game. So, so, um, so I gave all that to them. Oh, that's that's great. That uh, it's it's available for people to see and and check out. That's awesome. Um. Okay, and I think we're now moving into the alien abduction era of things. Um. <laughs> so, let's. Uh, can you talk a little bit about? your choosing of the the platform Atari 2600 to return to retro gaming. Is there something about the 2600 as opposed to all the other consoles and computer systems that you program for to come back to working on? Um, so <laughs> I'll be perfectly honest. It wasn't, it wasn't my idea to go back in time. <laughs> so what happened to me, like what I do for entertainment of making my own thing is I'll make a 3D game because I never got to make a 3D game on a game system that had the ability to really make a good 3D game. Like I made 3D games on <laughs> on, on game systems that should have never had a 3D game on them, but I never got a chance to make a console game that was 3D. So that's like, like something that I get out of my system of doing it just out of passion um so yeah uh, dan kitchen contacted me and told me what gary and dave and he were doing and i was really taken right. back by it at first where i was like i like i, I want to go back in time like that would be weird you know? <laughs> so you know and he's telling me he's telling me that oh it's no but it's fun you know you, like you you know i'm like well, what do you we mean swear remember? it was 40 years ago it was like 40 years ago and, and, and he's like oh Oh, it comes back, you know, like riding a bike or something. So <laughs> he told me about these tools. 
tools that people have now to make them. And then that, that's when I discovered this whole homebrew thing. And I had no idea any of that stuff was going on. And so I started playing around with it in that uh, 8-bit workshop. And, you know, at yeah. first I thought it was really strange. And then and all of a sudden it was like ticking me off. Like I remember, immediately remembered 6502. That was like, you know, it was like another language to me or something. But the, the <laughs> idiosyncrasies of the 2600 did not immediately come back to me. And, I, and then I got like obsessed with it because it's like an, it's like an engineering problem more than it's more engineering than programming yeah. to me. But to, so I just yeah. Then I got into it. But then I start. But then I started doing crazy experiments, and you know, <laughs> I wasn't trying to make an Activision quality game. I was like messing with ideas, like what if I was in back in time and I didn't have to follow those rules uh, that the Activision uh, had? Like, could I have made a better game? And so I started doing strange things like that. But <laughs> uh, I, I think we actually skipped over something here in my notes. Um, it's you said in the early two thousands, Activision came to you uh about making a game um this is a note you sent me oh that Make... was that was that was really, really strange yeah right I, I i got home from whatever work i was doing and the phone rings and the guy says oh my name's bobby kodak and i'm like i'm like what i said never mind <laughs> <laughs> and it was basically the CEO of Activision. So I found my <laughs> phone number and told that oh, all these people at Activision still really love Hero and would I be interested in working on a sequel to Hero? <laughs> wow. And and what what platform would this have been on? Would it have been a 3D game like like you always wanted to do on a modern platform? Or would it be more a uh, 2D homage updated graphics hero version? I don't know. It never got that far. I think it was, it, it seemed like what he was talking about was mobile, you know, uh, help him out. like uh, iPhone. Oh, okay. Or the iPhone period. It was like, it was around then, but like mid to. Okay. So more of a, a, almost a recreation that would work for an iPhone of hero. That makes sense. Right, right. So they did, well, right, but they did that with Pitfall, but it, it didn't go over very well. And it seemed to have nothing to do with Pitfall. There's a, this iPhone game where you're just running forward forever, jumping, and they, right. and they called it Pitfall. And I was like, it wasn't, <laughs> didn't have anything to do with Pitfall. <laughs> yeah, so, so just to cash in on the name and nostalgia rather than like, oh, this is a, a proper sequel to Pitfall or a proper sequel to Hero. You know, um, yeah. that people well, would like. Yeah, right. But that's what happened with Pitfall. But what he was talking about was like it being really like like Hero, but modernized. And I was like, yeah, of course I'd work on it. That would be really cool. But nothing came of it. But I was honored that it, yeah. you know, guy even called guy like that that called me up. I mean, yeah, he's exactly. a billionaire or whatever, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so many ideas floating around, but you never know what'll hit or what won't hit. Yeah. <clears throat> so <clears throat> let's. Um, when did the development of Alien Abduction start? When um, Dan Kitchen contacted you, what what year was this? Was this before um, they released um, their first game through Audacity, or was it after the release of it? No, no, it wasn't that long ago. It was. It was uh, he contacted me in uh, January or maybe early February of 2022. Okay. Um, so let's, uh, I'm going to let you run with this, but can you t uh, step us through the timeline of from when Dan t uh, contacted you about making a game <clears throat> and then through Atari and then the VCS and then back to <laughs> audacity again because <laughs> oh, yeah, i think that right. might be very I'm sure, I'm sure people are, be very confusing sure people are real curious and i seem like a flake like what's with this guy yeah because right. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, i think it's quite confusing for people it's like what's what's going on you said 
Dan contacted you, but then it was released on Atari, but then you went back to uh, Audacity. So uh, I'll let you have the floor for this uh, to, uh, to, to give us the timeline. Mm. Okay. Uh, okay, so he contacted me in January or early February. So then, you know, I, I, I wasn't, you know, doing any working on anything. And so I was like, yeah, okay, I started fooling around with it. And then all of a sudden I started really getting into it. So I just started doing it by full time of it, making making a game, you know, and I like wanting to make a sequel to Hero, but I can't because I signed documents that you know they own it, so I would never do that. So I had to f learn from uh, Gary Kitchens, like an expert witness <clears throat> and loyal trials and stuff. So I had to learn like what I could <laughs> what I could do and what I couldn't do. So and it right. turns out that somebody. Somebody can't own my style, you know. Yeah. Uh, but they can own Hero, right? So I can't make a Hero, but they can't own my style. So, and I can't make it look like Hero, and I can't make it be the same story. But I could come up with something that you know is my what I think is a fun game, right? So, yeah. so that's what I went with. Uh, so I worked on it for I don't know six months or something, and oh no, I worked on it from. I think it was to the fall, so it was like January to like, to like September maybe. And what happened was, was every day I was working on it, my arm would hurt more and more and more. Oh no, that was in the middle part of it. So in the middle of the summer, <laughs> I, my arm started hurting, and so I was could not figure out what was wrong with my arm. So I took a break from working on it. And I went to the doctor to figure out what was wrong with my arm. And they told me I had tennis elbow. And I said, I don't play tennis. Yeah. And they said, oh, <laughs> do you play? You know, you've been playing golf. You've been doing this. And I'm like, no, I didn't. I didn't do any of those things. And they said, well, <laughs> this um, tendon that goes from your wrist up to your elbow, it's like the tendon's like damaged at the elbow. And wow. Uh, so the choice is. They would give you a shot that might make it immediately go away, or it might paralyze your arm permanently. The shot. Oh, oh. Or you could go to physical therapy and do these painful exercises. And he swore that, you know, it would take that it would take a year, but it would work. That it would fix my elbow. Wow. So, obviously, I chose the physical therapy one. <laughs> Because yeah. I didn't want my arm to be there. <laughs> of course. I don't even know what the odds are, <laughs> the odds are on that. So I won't take those odds either. I'll, I'll go for yeah, the physiotherapy it's not as really well. Good dice to roll. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. Right. Give me a stick to bite on when I'm, you know, doing whatever it is with my arm. <laughs> and me do. But the most humiliating part about it was, is I kept trying to figure out, well, how I did this to myself. And I, you know, and I came home one <laughs> what day could it be? after going to physical therapy, and I'm, and I'm working on the computer with the joystick in my hand, going like this you know forward up and down <laughs> which pulls on that muscle yeah. that goes from here down to here and, uh, and you know and they expl had yeah. explained to me in physical therapy how my arm works and then when i got home and i was like oh that's how i did it so then i actually went oh. to the doctor and the physical therapist with a joystick and demonstrated <laughs> to him what i was doing for months it was kind of embarrassing yeah <laughs> and i said yep that's, that's how you did it uh, did you switch to a D-pad after that rather than a joystick? <laughs> yeah, but the but that alien abduction game, I tried to do it with the arrow keys and I tried to do it with a D-pad. Yeah. But that thing game has diagonals and to do diagonals yeah. doesn't work. Like that's really hard to do compared to on a joystick. So I, joystick only, that's for sure. Right, so I kept trying to figure out how to do it. And then, you know... Uh, you know, Audacity's, you know, like their first game was really, you know, elaborate, like all the stuff they put in there. So they were hoping that I would I would make my game. Like I was really making a 16K game, but they were hoping that I would make it really elaborate and put in all these screens and, you know, yeah. make it like as advanced as that Circus Convoy game was. But I couldn't yeah. do that because of my arm. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah. So and then Gary said, oh, well, you know, what about we just publish it as is? And I was like, I felt, I don't know, I was like, yeah, okay, so what, like a maturity case? Like, you're just going to publish it as <laughs> is because I hurt my arm? 
So then I was yeah. like, well, you know, I can't do it. I'm sorry. So I'll just, you know, see if I can do something else with it. So then I right. slowly just finished up the, the ideas that I was trying to put into it where it wouldn't hurt my arm. And then I'd wear this brace on my elbow. And, and wow. I did the whole thing with the key, with the arrow key. <laughs> I didn't use the joystick. I didn't pick that thing up again. Uh, and then, so then, so then in like November or something, I contacted, I figured out Atari Age publishes the games and Atari was publishing games. So I contacted both of them at the same time. You know, thinking, yeah, I don't know whether somebody wants this or whatever. And then, you know, yep. they contacted me and 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 Atari wanted to uh, put it on the VCS and then said that they would make a cartridge of it later. So it was you know, right. much of a choice like, yeah, okay, well, am I going to go with Atari or, you know, small Atari age, which at the time wasn't owned by Atari, right? <clears throat> so I yeah. decided to, to, to go for the Atari thing. And then and I don't really know what happened in Atari, but they made me think they were going to make a cartridge. And then... All this time would go by and they never did anything about that. And then I would ask about it and then they said, well, there's like, you know, secret projects going on or whatever. We're not going to be able to get to you for a year or something like that. Yeah. So then I waited like a year and then all of a sudden Atari comes out with a 2600 plus and with one new game. And I'm like, well, I guess yeah. the game didn't make the cut. Like, these people aren't serious. They're, not, they're, 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 you know, like who wouldn't come out with some new games for a new game system? That's like how you make money, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, so it seemed. Was yeah, like, yeah. I was like, okay, I guess they were just like, you know, being nice to me, telling me they were going to publish it. So then they, so then I said, so then I contacted them and I said, well, I don't think you're really going to publish it. You're not really serious. And then, so then they said to go contact Atari Age, who they had acquired by then. So now they owned Atari Age, and they told me to contact Atari Age. And then Atari right. Age was like swamped with trying to manufacture the cartridges they're making. So they said, oh, right. you know, they, they, they would be interested in doing it, but 10 months later. So you're talking about I made this thing, and now it's like, oh, yeah, two years later, and I missed the launch of the 2600 plus opportunity. Right. So then... So then I thought to myself, well, you know, why didn't I just give the thing to Gary two years ago? Like, why didn't I just say, okay, right. I can't do it because my heart's up. Here, you take it. Do whatever you want and give me whatever you think's fair. So that's what Gary and I agreed on. Then it went back to Audacity. And then they right. magically turned it into a real product in like two months or something. <laughs> I mean, it was really fast. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And, and at that point, you brought it back to Audacity. Um, it changed. the The game changed it. It uh, you extended it. Uh, it still has the the twenty levels, but then it um, there was more difficult levels, and uh, it extended. And right, right, right. It, it added. You added right, David, added on the the high score and right. et cetera, et cetera. So maybe talk about what was added to it when you brought it back to Audacity. But, but, but mm -hmm. I can't because I didn't do that. David Crane got <laughs> fixing my finishing, fixing bugs they found in my game, and finishing yeah. my game to make it compatible with, uh, with Audacity. And that was the first thing I did when I went to that Ohio retro game show and I saw him. It was the first time I'd seen him in years. It was the first thing I did was apologize to him, but he had to finish my game for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! Okay. <laughs> Well, that it's it's kind of good that they didn't stress your arm anymore, though. And how is your arm now? Well, it's permanently damaged. Like it, it, if I lean oh. on it the wrong way, it feels like bees are stinging me or whatever. But oh. if I do if I do all these exercises, it doesn't normally bother me in normal everyday things. Like. Like when it was messed up, I couldn't even like you know pick up a grocery bag or something. It would hurt. I'd have to use my left arm and that sort of thing. So yeah. I don't know what the the joystick would do to me now. But I'm thinking if I if I was yeah. going to work on a joystick game, I'd make one where diagonals don't matter, <laughs> or it's just right, or it's just right and left and a fire button. 
<laughs> just a, a four-way game or a two-way game there's no more eight-way games coming from john that's that's for sure we don't want your arm damaged anymore the... <laughs> but the guy told me that it was going to heal but it didn't so i have to go back and ask him like what uh, the burning thing is because i don't know whether oh it's permanent so everybody better appreciate alien abduction because this man <laughs> has permanently injured his arm for yeah, your yeah. entertainment. Not directly, yeah, but, but you know. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, but but the, but most of the reason that it happened was is because of the way I develop games. So when I make a game, I make the easy levels, then I make yeah. the really hard levels, and then I fill in the middle part. <laughs> so when I went to go make the really hard levels, I was like, you know what? Here. It wasn't really hard enough. Like a lot of people could could beat that game, so I was going to make it in <laughs> unbelievably challenging levels. It's hard, way harder than what's than what's in it now. I had levels that are way harder than what's in it now, and that's what messed up my arm. So then I changed <laughs> oh, the game, the, the design of the game, because I was like, well, I don't want to hurt somebody. What are you like? <laughs> <laughs> you'd, have, you'd have to put a warning on the box at that point, right? No. Right. May result in permanent damage. <laughs> yeah, right. And then get sued. Yeah, right. So, but I changed the game because no, no, I was the, getting, the warning will cover it. I was getting carried away making the highest level game of the game. <laughs> Atari Warlord suggests maybe a paddle game. There you go. <laughs> that won't put strain on your arm. <laughs> right, I never worked on a paddle game. <laughs> oh, good challenge! I'm gonna I'm gonna boot up the game now, so uh, Erlen can play it and everybody can see it who hasn't seen it. I'm sure everybody has, but yeah. And my role in this show is I don't know anything, so <laughs> yes. I haven't actually played your game before, so this will be my first time experiencing. So it. you'll get to see how a noob plays the game. Yeah, that's that's what I do here. I, 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 <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't even I, know what day already, it is. I, I just know, show up. I already know what 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 confuses a noob on this game <laughs> because it has a one strange feature. Okay, we're going to switch over and um, let's see. Question from Thrust. Where, uh, when and where did the name come from for Alien Abduction? Uh, that was David Crane actually came up with that. But I was calling it Rescue and then, and then, then Dane, Dave was like, down to so this Alien Abduction game you're making you know, in some email. And I was like, wow, that's a great name for the game, Alien Abduction. <laughs> You can't go long, wrong David with the alliteration, that's for sure. <laughs> David Frank. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. Let me just get the volumes good here. Okay. <clears throat> so, um... <clears throat> Can you can you talk a little bit about your uh, the difference in your approach to development uh, in the '80s versus development now? Like even in terms of like the tools, um, the way you approach the game, any kind of differences or similarities as well. So the um, you know in an old in an old game like an original Atari game, you're starting with absolutely nothing. Right, like you're either starting with code that you wrote on their previous game, or you're starting with absolutely nothing. Where in modern games, there's all these engines that do all these things for you. It's like you're not starting with nothing. Like you can immediately make progress without writing any code. So it's wildly yep. different to get started on an old game because you have to do a lot just to get the screen to do anything. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, so did you uh, did you program this in um, assembly code or did you? I mean, somebody asked you if you used a Batari Basic, which I highly doubt you did. So I'm I'm guessing you programmed this in assembly code with like helper applications, or is there an environment at Audacity that uh, you programmed in? Um. So I programmed it in assembly language, and I did it with that that website, Eight uh, Bit Workshop. Right, a lot of good it, tools on there. In the browser, I wrote the whole thing in the browser, and then oh, I was told that, that 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 thing's not as uh, accurate as Stella. It's emulation. Mm -hmm. So then I would export yes. it, export it, and test it in Stella to see whether there was something you know that I. I missed in the in 8-bit workshop 
But in Audacity right. games, you don't start with nothing. In Audacity games, they have this big elaborate uh, thing that Dave wrote, all these tools. And I, I drove him yeah. crazy because it's easier to integrate with his his operating system or whatever you want to call it, his program. It's easier to do that at the beginning of a project than it is after you already wrote something. Oh, okay, yeah. So, and so, but I was like, and I like, I didn't want like his code to do something for me that I couldn't remember how to do it myself. <laughs> I don't know why. Right. I don't know why, right. but I just wanted to relearn <laughs> it myself. And so I kept. He kept saying, "You got to move this into the base program," and then I didn't do it. You got to move this into the base program, and then the more you do that, the harder it is to move it into his base program. So I'm sure. I, um, and then he ended up getting stuck having to do it again like i put it in this base program but then when i went oh, to oh yeah go give it to atari i took it out of his base program and then finished it so then when they got it back he had to put it into the base program so <laughs> it tortured him for it. So, so he got his way in the end essentially <laughs> <laughs> yeah but he had to do it <laughs> oh geez well um let's see in in Alien Abduction, uh, you've taken what you've done in Hero and brought it pretty much to the next level. Was it a conscious decision to make your new game sort of a spiritual successor to Hero? Was it something like, oh, I, I, people will want Hero from me? Or is it something that you had in mind yeah, for a yeah. while? No, that, yeah, that happened immediately. It was happened immediately as soon as I talked to Dan or Dan. And it's like, oh yeah, we're making these games. And I was like, I was like, and I told them the story of uh, that, you know, Bobby Kodak called up and like, hey, do you want to work on me? I was like, that's weird. And I told right. him that story, and then he's like, oh, yeah, people love Hero. And I'm like, yeah, well, too bad. We, too bad you guys don't own Hero. You know, you don't have the rights to Hero. And he put it into yeah. my mind that, that you know, well, you know, maybe you could do something like Hero. So I was thinking about Hero when I was doing it, but I was. And making sure it wasn't exactly like Hero, so I wouldn't get in trouble. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was dark. <laughs> Thank you that's to that I, mysterious my, stranger for wife, turning on the light. Said, my wife said it's too dark, and she brought a lamp over. Yeah, the sun's going. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was, on the, it was getting the spooky. It's pouring and raining. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> dark and raining. It was spooky then. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. That's okay. <laughs> it's all good now. Um, so, so it was it was a conscious decision, and um, nobody's faulting you for that for sure. It is awesome, and I'm sure people are like yes, Hero Part Two. Um, so, what was what's what's the reaction been to Alien Abduction? You you've gone to um, a retro gaming convention now. You've probably you've had enough time to read things online about the reaction to the VCS release. Right, so so the so I never got any you know feedback from from Atari on it, and uh, at the trade show you couldn't play it at the at our, uh, retro game show. You could they couldn't play it. They just walked up to the booth oh. and, and it's like, hey, here's a new game from John Van Ryzen, and there he is right there. You know he made Hero, and you buy the game, and he'll sign your sign your box. So the people who were in the game with it never even played it. <laughs> I don't know whether all those shows work that way, but <laughs> so, so I didn't get any feedback no. on that. So the only <laughs> the only feedback I ever I ever got was on um, you know people posted things on YouTube. So right. you know there would be things on YouTube where some guy made a video and he was like, "This oh. is he, he like he made his own box because you know he played it on the VCS and he didn't he wanted a the cartridge oh. in a box. He made his own box <laughs> and he shows the box at the beginning and then." Oh, he plays nice. the game and, you know, and says, and says, oh, well, I bet you if Tari owned, owned the rights to Hero, they would have called this Hero too. Or, this game's great. And so I watched a bunch of video of, it, of people reviewing. So that was pretty fun. <laughs> yeah, that must have been nice. Yeah, I mean, I had I had a lot of fun playing uh, Alien Abduction when it came out in the VCS, and and I was on the uh, uh, test team. Uh, for for this version, the cartridge version, so oh, it was an honor. 
yeah. an absolute honor to to be on the test team for for this updated release and to, to check everything out and find some bugs which i was able to find some bugs so i'm happy about that to make it make the game better well, I'm, I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm honored that you tested my game you know you're you're, you're like a famous uh, you know, poster guy and this retro information i'm, I'm honored you tested it Oh, of course. Heroes, here's a classic. It's 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 such an amazing game. Uh, but I still have not got the patch score, which which drives me crazy. Um, but I'm gonna I'm determined to get oh, the patch score a, in Hero. It's. I thought I thought that was one of the coolest things that Audacity's actually do in that patch thing. <laughs> really cool oh like you, 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 oh you yeah it, that's what he gave me you get a patch like in the old days that's really cool oh yeah i i think that's such a great thing because it gives you something to shoot for in games it's like okay you play the game but if they give you like a goal not not just to get to the end of the game but like a a score goal i find myself i play the game much much more and over and over again because oh, yeah, you yeah. start challenging yourself. Oh, yeah, right. And then, right, yeah. Yeah, right. And then Dave made that whole thing where you could post a high score from a 2600 game. That's like mind boggling. What do you do with oh, that, yeah. right? Yeah, right. And all of a sudden, that's, oh, yeah. that's cool, right? They, you, you can go compare your score to somebody else, right? You couldn't do that in the old days. <laughs> no, yeah. There's the, Audacity has done it with like the QR code, and there's also a, a cartridge called the Plus, uh, the Plus Cart that actually connects to the internet. That also people have retroactively uh, changed the old games to actually automatically post oh, through the oh, internet man. high scores. Well, people are into this. I guess it. Oh, I guess it, oh yeah. I, I guess it wasn't a fad, you know. <laughs> 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 oh no it's huge it's huge there's even shows dedicated to it oh my god <laughs> internet shows yeah no people really really love the 2600 like they really really love it so, i mean so it may what, not be so what, a mass so, so you so you love the 2600 or, or you know but do you play totally yeah. modern new games like like playstation the modern playstation uh, yeah games, the pc games yep uh, he does too. I play. But, yeah. Yeah. We. I have. We have the switch upstairs. We play um, computer games, uh, mostly on computer now. We kind of stopped at PS4 and uh, uh, that that level. We didn't buy the new one because everything's on computer and you can hook it up to your big screen TV and everything like that, and you can get much more power out of it. But yeah, we. Wait, I have wait, like, so, so, pretty much so every. You ping pong them back and forth between one of those elaborate hundred person games and something that's what yeah. one person <laughs> made, like you know, forty years yep. ago. That's pretty interesting. Yep. Because it's all about gameplay. It doesn't matter about graphics. It doesn't matter about sound. It is a hundred percent gameplay, and and I say that over and over on the show. I've played games with just squares that are just squares on the screen, and it has better gameplay than modern games. Like it, the pe yeah, people's creativity knows no bounds. Right, but how could you how could you convince a young person to try a game that it's just squares, right? <laughs> You have to invite them to uh, be part of a online Twitch show. Yeah, that's it? right. Yeah, because he's 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 younger than me, and and I love his perspective because he is he wasn't born when these these consoles were out, right? And I have him yeah. on the show to be so he can compare. Well, I have no nostalgia for any of this. Yes, that's the key. As but he doesn't I, care about the twenty six hundred. He but, loves the games. But right? I've come to like appreciate the beauty of the simplicity of them. You know, there is something that like some games require so much study to just even begin to do them. And the beauty of these twenty six hundred games is like the one button play style. You pick it up and you understand it. Also, uh, for me too, engaging in history. It's the beauty of like looking back at these times of these when these games were made, and it's a different era and I, I love that too i'm such a fan and interested in video gaming that like i yeah getting to see also getting to hear your stories is but, wonderful but, but like, as well but like, the, so but like the controller i mean the controller is so primitive i mean five <laughs> buttons compared to <laughs> compared to these insane things they have on an xbox where you're buttons. like how many buttons are there like you know hey i just found another one <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, it gets it gets kind of overwhelming for me. Some of the modern modern controllers, and you play like mouse and keyboard, and it uses up the whole keyboard oh, yeah. sometimes, right? 
But I also like I understand your arm issue. I had <laughs> one point I went into the like ER with a tendonitis from my hand from doing all this like clicking, and that there and I was an embarrassing conversation <laughs> with the nurse being like, also oh, how did you get your? I was like I yeah, just, well it's really it was during the pandemic. For me. I'm like 60 be. years old, and I have to go in and explain why I was playing video games <laughs> all day long. <laughs> they're like what 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 is wrong with you I, <laughs> I i know i'm gonna be in the nursing home and i'm gonna be like give me the latest games just hand them over to me and by then we'll have perfected mind controls yeah, yeah, so that yeah. we don't even have to move our hands right um it's amazing with this game i keep playing it and i keep making the same mistakes and i'm like erlen what are you doing like this thing right here has gotten me so oh, many yeah. times yeah the surprise well, so, pop-up yeah, that enemies. was an interesting thing somebody told me about heroes they, they told me that in hero the game was hard but they always felt like it was because they made a mistake it wasn't like they ever felt like, yeah. they, got, yes. like, they, like they got cheated isn't that interesting? That I did that on purpose. That is, that but is I, but a, it's, that's a strange thing about that game. <laughs> that's that's a repeated thing that comes up on the show a lot. Um, that games shouldn't feel unfair. They should feel that you can always do better. That it's not the game's fault; it's your fault. And when you've reached yeah, yeah, that, right. if something feels level, like it's luck, you know, like yeah, what am I playing a slot machine? Like, or am I playing a game? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and Hero hits that perfectly. Alien Abduction hits that perfectly. Like, if, after you play Alien Abduction for any length of time, you start flying through the levels. Like, you're almost... The, the floors almost disappear for you <laughs> because you're, you're just... You glide through them and you just barely touch the ground to do this and then you fly up around. It's, uh, it's right, actually right. And it becomes, quite and it, magical. And it becomes obvious oh. which way you're supposed to go. You didn't actually remember the screen. You just know that there's a pattern that it's obvious I shouldn't go that way. <laughs> See, yeah. like right here. You're just diving through patterns. Oh. Yeah. Um, um, okay, so the next question. How aware uh, were you? You kind of touched on this before. How aware were you of the large, 20, large 2600 homebrew community before or while you were working on alien abduction? So you probably so, came to realize that there was this groundswell of of uh, love for the 2600. Right, so um, in, in sometime in the 90s or, or uh, maybe early 2000, I worked for uh, Gary Kitchen and David Crane had a company that uh, made what's called, ad, what they called Adver games. So, you know, Nabis Nabisco, yes. you know, paid them to, their company to make a game where you know, all the characters are Oreo cookies, but it's, you know, a game. <laughs> the kids getting pummeled with ash while they're playing the game. Like, yeah. I've, yeah. Dan talked about that when I interviewed him. He, he made a lot of those games. Yeah. Right. So I worked on those games with them. Uh, and during that time period, they took me to a retro game show in, in uh, Las Vegas. And that was the first time I ever even knew that existed. And I was like, what is this? And I'm like, it's like all these people and they're here to buy games that are like 20 years old. And then like people are coming up to me and they're like, oh, you're John Van Rijs you made Hero? We're like, like, a, like as if, like, like as if I, uh, you know, like they were playing it yesterday or something. And, it, and <laughs> but it weirded me out because it was like, I, I, because I was like, oh, I'm in my forties and I'm retro. Like, I didn't, I didn't feel that. I didn't feel that. <laughs> so, so then I didn't experience it again until they got me to do this game. Uh, okay. Yeah, I, I could I could see that. It's like, oh, I, I'm retro. Not the the games are retro, and therefore I'm retro. Uh oh. <laughs> well, yeah, but that was a weird thing at that Ohio show where it would be a father right. and a son, and the father would come up to the Audacity booth. And say, oh, I loved Hero. I'm, I'm buying, I'm buying your game. You know, yeah. you know, and ask me to sign it, and I say, oh, thank you. Yeah. Okay, but but it was like the territory. reverse. Like I would expect to see the reverse. Like a father brings the, and the kids buying the game, not the, not the, not the father's buying. <laughs> right? It was the opposite. Yeah, it's all. It's always nice to see young people get into 
these old systems. It's actually really weird to see that as well. Yeah, yeah. One one kid came up to the booth. He was dressed as Super Mario. <laughs> <laughs> it's like in his 20s, but he's there looking at all these retro games. It was pretty wild. <laughs> um, if anybody in the chat has questions, um, just type in all caps, question, and then type your question. Um, Nostalgic has one. What retro games do you enjoy playing today? So as a broader question, do you play the older games, like on the 2600, or do you play modern games or any games at all? Or, or, or does the joystick thing kind of answer that? It's like, oh, I don't play them because I injured my elbow just playing my own no, game. No, I have one of those. <laughs> no, I have one of those, right you know, those okay, okay. collection uh, devices where it's like, a, you know, 100 games in, in this console. I have one of those and I go play, oh, right. I go play old, old Activision games sometimes. So that, that, that's fun. Okay. And up until like maybe... Two years ago, I used to play Xbox a lot, but then I don't know. I, don't know, I just yeah, I just <laughs> lost my interest in you know how many different ways I could shoot somebody Did what? in 3D. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's like there's not, a lot they're, of they're not very innovative. You know what I mean? Like they seem like no. they're all like the similar story, but with some other you know similar mechanics, but different stories. Uh, yeah, I, I generally don't go for F, uh, first person shooters very often because of that reason. It has to be quite innovative. Otherwise, it just kind of blends in with a lot of them. I, I if for, for modern games, I usually go for like retro style modern games or something that has a little bit of different quality it, yeah, to it. And then but, the, and then yeah, the, the mobile, FPSs are just same. The mobile same. games, like I made them <laughs> for a, a living, but. A touchscreen is not a controller. I mean, it's just it's 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 like completely no. different thing. So it was like, yeah, okay, yeah, you could make a game for it, but it's just it never felt like it's really a game to me. It's like a variation of games. So I played, yeah, but I like browser I like browser games. There's a lot of really cool browser games. You know, where you get pummeled with ads, but yep. but there's really strange, <laughs> you know, and unusual games that you can play. <laughs> Yeah, I like innovative games, and that, that's kind of what keeps me drawn back to the 2600 and modern modern games for the 2600 is the variety of games that are being made. They're they're off the wall, just like arcade games yeah, yeah. were in the 80s. Like, yeah, yeah, none of this makes sense, but it's fun. None of it makes sense. <laughs> yeah, but, those are, but that guy goes back to what we talked about at the beginning, right? Where we're, we're at Activision, they just let you make whatever you want. It. Like, yeah, okay, make something that's fun. Yeah. Or I don't think it works like that now. If you're going to put 100 people on a thing for, you know, two, five years, you're not going to just wing it, right? With some crazy, oh, some no. crazy idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, this, I, I think this uh, next question kind of answers, you've, you've kind of answered it already, but did you reach out uh, outside of um, the Audacity crew uh, to any other 2600 developers or reference any online programming techniques when uh making alien abduction or were you just reaching back to what you what Sorry. you knew from uh your own programming experiences um the only thing i did that was really strange was because you know all these People were taking these games and and, and uh, re redoing them or modifying them. I was like, oh my god, you can like find like the source code to Pitfall, or you can find the source code to ah. to, to River Raid. And I was like, well, I worked at Activision and I never read the code to those two those those games, and I, <laughs> and I could find it online. So that was really strange so that I could like see how somebody else approached making the games by reading their code because I never did that but back in the day. <laughs> Yeah. Well, that, that is something unique. People have disassembled them. They've commented on them. They've, you know, they, some, some of the source code is available, but some people have reverse engineered the assembly code, um, which is, which is absolutely amazing. Yeah, but, 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 you know, but David Crane's like a, a total, like the world's greatest expert on the 2600, if you ask me. So it's like, <laughs> you can't figure something out. You ask yeah. him, he knows, you know, like, so that, yeah, exactly. that makes it really easy you've, working with, with those guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You've got a, an incredible resource right there. <laughs> um, I, and, 
this leads to the next question. I think for a lot of people as well, for me, your release of Alien Abduction through Audacity feels exciting like the height of the classic 2600 era during the incredible run of Activision games. How has it been collaborating with David Crane and the Kitchen Brothers? It, it, to me, it almost feels like, oh my God, Activision's reforming. <laughs> it's, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, that, that was a, a really interesting, but it's like remote, you know? So, you know, Dan Kitchen lives in, you know, Connecticut and Gary lives in California or Dave lives in California. So it was like the collaboration yeah. was all email, you know? Which was like nothing <laughs> yeah. like like how it used to happen in the old days, you know what I mean? So that so so that yeah. part w w was wasn't like the old days. But then seeing him at that show, that was that was really interesting because I hadn't seen him in a long time. And then we're like in this environment that's you know like when we would go to CES 40 years ago, yeah. and you know, standing at some booth and you know talking about stuff. It was, it was like a, it was a time warp experience. The whole thing. <laughs> yeah, that must have been a lot of fun. Uh, getting getting to see them in person again. Oh, oh it hurts. Um, so, this is more of a programming uh, question. Jumping in almost tenfold size from the original 16k game of of Alien Abduction to the 128k release is is quite massive. So. I, I know that David put the rest of it in, but can you tell us what went into the other 100k <laughs> of space on the game? So, so my my understanding of that is is that they only buy one size ROM. So like they don't make a game like in the old days they would make a game for oh. 2k ROM, 4k ROM, 8k ROM, whatever. It doesn't change the price. So if you were out to make a 16k game or an 8k game you what they put it in is this giant rom because it doesn't make a difference money wise right okay okay yeah i didn't disassemble so, so, it so, so, so what happened, i didn't look so, at the source so, so code what so what happened to me was <laughs> i made at the point of where i had a 16k game I, my arm was messed up so i didn't keep it up. <laughs> And then they they right. took it and put in all of their technology, and took and more like. Oh. So I don't even know. Okay. I don't even know how that, much that makes it. sense. And Dave could answer. <laughs> oh. Oh. That makes a lot of sense. So they they probably didn't use all one twenty. They didn't use all one twenty eight. And yeah, yeah. I mean they put in isn't, the QR code. Isn't that strange code. that it doesn't matter anymore <laughs> from a money standpoint? That blew my mind. Where I was like, oh man, but that's that would be like buying. You know, sixty cartridges. <laughs> you know, in nineteen eighty, and they like a yeah. You know, it's weird. It's amazing how technology driving a advanced. driving a Ferrari at ten miles an hour. <laughs> that's it, right? <laughs> <clears throat> but but it makes sense because I think buying a four K ROM would be more expensive than buying a one twenty eight K ROM. No, we're right? Dave. You can't even buy one. That's the way he made it. Dave. Yeah. But like you can't even buy a small ROM. And I was like, wow, that's weird. <laughs> it's impossible. Um, <clears throat> so every developer ends up playing and playtesting their own games uncountable times, as your arm can attest to that. Um, so how good are you at Hero and Alien Abduction? Uh, in in your own opinion, of course. <clears throat> oh well, I, I, the I would I would never ship uh, a, what I would tell somebody is a, my finished work. The final thing I do before I would ever do that is I play from start to finish the whole game. I beat the game because if, because okay. because, if, because if I didn't test that it would be like yeah okay somebody could get zipped right like you killed yourself trying to get to level 20 and there's a bug or something right so I, True. so I always True. play I can play my game from start to finish before I hand it so, so I guess that means oh. pretty good right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and that, that's true on, yeah, on that, that game I had to do it with a keyboard <laughs> that's very challenging oh my goodness <clears throat> so we've got some uh, questions from the crowd some of them are repeated of what I already have so just listen for your question if you're asking them in the chat <clears throat> so Bojay1997 in CPU Wiz asks 
Um, both questions about the box artwork, um, which I believe you said was done by your brother. Right. Um, why is she above an ocean and why is the dress not wet? And uh, why is there a difference in the layout from the other Audacity releases of Circus Convoy and upcoming Casey's Gold? Like the boxes look uh, quite different. Okay, from so, the looks okay, of the so others. when I figured out that Atari wasn't, <clears throat> wasn't going to, I, or I no longer believe that Atari was going to publish a cartridge of it, then I went and talked to um, Atari Age. And when you yeah. when you make a game at, a, at Atari age, they tell you that oh well you know you can make the the box and the manual if you want. Right. So my brother has. I wish I could show you the painting over there. My brother my brother made the painting <laughs> for uh, the company after Activision that I worked at that I was one of the founders of with Gary Kitchen. Oh. Every time. He yeah. made the painting for the cover of the first game that we made for that company, and so I was like, "Oh, that's just yeah. cool! Like, why would I just let 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 Atari Age make something up? That would be fun to have my brother do it." So I called up my brother, yeah. and asked him if he would he would do it, and then when I showed him the graphics of the Atari Twenty Six Hundred game, and he's a commercial artist. Like, if you went to ever went to his website, it's like his imagery he makes that would blow your mind, but. So, so I, I show him the artwork and he's like, uh, like you know, he just doesn't get it. He can't relate to like no. the primitive 2600 artwork. So he <laughs> said, just tell me back. what the story is. And so I said, it's it's a princess that got abducted by aliens and, and you've got this, these jet boots and you're going to fly up into, into the spaceship and, and rescue her and do whatever you want. Oh, no, I can't <laughs> Just one second. Something is being very strange with my joystick. I just lost the <laughs> left direction. <laughs> That's okay. I'm going to switch joysticks. Extra hard mode. When yeah, you no kidding. No left. left. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, we'll try a different joystick. We'll get there. Yeah. Yep. Okay, we're joystick. good. We're back. Nothing to do with the game. Ooh. Okay, I'm just gonna. Okay. Got up to level eight. Getting there. I made it to level nine, actually. Nine. Oh my goodness. I'm just gonna kill myself <laughs> so that I can. <clears throat> um, D Train asks, uh, did you have any issues remembering how to program six five zero seven or six five zero two code? No, I didn't. I, I didn't have any any problem remembering sixty five zero two code, but I did. The one thing I did forget about, which I guess in most programs it doesn't really matter, but on a Tori 2600 it does. That a cycle gets added when you jump to something that's on, yes. on another page. And that, yes. that I yeah. completely probably blocked it out of my mind because it's so horrible. And that one like threw me for a <laughs> loop. I was like, what is going on? I changed one line of code and the whole screen's rolling and whatever, and I could not figure it oh. out. And then all of a sudden it, it dawned on me. So there were a few that were, you know, didn't come back so quick. Oh. And that was one of them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I wonder if that's the one I found because I was went from screen to screen transition and uh, it started rolling a bit. But uh, yeah, that's that one is not super obvious that that jump uh, jump instruction uh, across a page. Right. Uh, oh. our, let's see. Let's see. Da, da, da. We answered that one. We answered that one. Um, we touched on this a little bit, but how did you play test before it went to Audacity? Was it just, um, your, well, before it went on to the, uh, VCS, what, what was your play testing? Was it just you or was there some other people involved? No, it was just me. It was okay. just me. Wow. I wrote the whole thing and then I, I put it in Dave's base program. Then I extracted it from Dave's pro program. Then I finished the, the 16K game. Then I tested it myself. Yeah. Then I gave it to Atari, and Atari tested it and told me they didn't find any bugs, and they put it out. But yeah, but I heard that there that there that there is some bug, or some guy says that the score would go. Yes. And then I heard about that, but I'm, and but Atari never reported it to me or anything. But I saw it on a forum. And then I tried to recreate yeah. it, but I couldn't recreate it because the person doesn't give any information about how how they did it. 
But somehow the oh. score would just keep adding up. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I saw him post that, and he did ask that, was that, was that bug ever fixed? Um, we didn't encounter it. I didn't see it come up in the uh, playtesting for the Audacity release, but I don't know, maybe David Crane found it? Uh, I guess the guy will have to... It's too bad he didn't say, like, oh. record a video or say which screen it was on or what yeah, level. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, right. There wasn't anything like that. Where, like, in other companies, you know, there would be, like, this communication that the person would report it on the, you know, on the VCS yeah. and be able to report it, and then they would forward it to you or whatever. There was no mechanism for that to happen. I just happened to come across it on a... <clears throat> I don't know, Atari age, mm. that somebody claimed it was a bug. And I tried yeah. really hard to figure it out, but I couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's let's hope it's fixed, but it's it's probably... That's the only report I've ever heard of a, a bug in the game. So, eh, 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 eh. so probably pretty rare. So maybe not many people will come across it. We'll, we'll call it a feature, a little <laughs> bonus. <laughs> well, yeah, but you'll find uh, out if, if somebody posts some insane score, that's impossible, right? Yeah, scores that are too high. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, VVG Double Down asks a question. I, I already know the answer to this. Um, did John have anything to do with the programming for the ports of Hero for any other consoles or computer? Because I know you did um, uh, approval of them, but did you uh, input any code for them? No, I didn't even do approval of them. <clears throat> The only time, oh, the only thing that happened. Time to update your Wikipedia. <laughs> no, the, the only thing that happened was the vice president of the game development came to New Jersey with this guy from um, England who, who made the 64, Commodore 64 version of it. And then he asked me what I thought about the graphics for, you know, in the 64, they tried to make it look like a cave. And so, you know, I, I, I made my comments on what on what, the, what it looked like. And then he asked me about the box. And I said, well, you know, I never liked the original hero box. I thought I thought my guy was a superhero. I didn't think he was goofy. Like he looks, he looks like something out of Mad Magazine or something on the cover. I thought, I thought, the, I thought my guy was a superhero. And then, oh, okay. And then, yeah. and then when the ports came out, all of a sudden the box completely changed to this thing that looked like a comic book. <laughs> but but oh, I never wow. even played, like say for example, a fifty-two hundred. And I had people tell me that that one's okay. really difficult because the joystick doesn't self-center. So oh. that the game's really yeah, really that would be challenging. Play. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because on, on your Wikipedia article, it says that you uh, approved all the other ones. You didn't program, but you approved. So somebody can update his Wikipedia article and reference this video. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. There's a lot of uh, wrong information. On Misinformation. Oh. Yeah. Um, no. Let's see. Level 11, John. This is how far I've Level made it. Level 11? This is You've the, come a long this way. This is how far I've made it. Oh, and right uh, back okay, to the so, beginning. So how, come, uh, how, come you don't need, how come you don't need an instruction manual? I don't know. I'm like... <laughs> well, that's that's the thing. On, on this show, we almost that's never the, read the instructions. I we think kind of yeah, explore. Yeah, the like, beauty of these games... But there's like different kinds of players. Like players that would be really mad if they didn't get an instruction manual. And then players who only read the manual if they have to. If they can't that's figure me. something out. Only if I have to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> something I, love, I love the exploration of games where you find out things uh, organically. But some people are like reading... <laughs> They were the people. Who, they were the people on the ride home would take the manual out, read it in the back seat of the car under the street lights as they pass by. Um, but I, 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 I didn't get that. I, all I got were were copies yeah. of games, and I never got instruction manuals. So I'm just so used to just playing the game without instructions. Yeah, yeah I, just, I, I do the same thing. Gotten. I only read the instructions if I can't figure something out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, Giles asks, does the game contain any Easter eggs? No. Unless Dave put something okay. in there. Dave, Dave might have. You so say you have to ask Dave because he actually finished it. So. Okay. <laughs> he might have put one in there. There you go. So, so that's a maybe. Yeah. So we'll see. Oh. Um, 
And Dionoid asked, this was already answered, how much work was it to add the extra Audacity platform features to the game, like QR code registration, high score? So that's a question for David, uh, how, how difficult that was. But I think a lot of those were probably brought over code from Circus Convoy, I would think. Right, right, right. He has this whole program that if, you, if you're going to make a game for Audacity, you just take his starting point and, uh, put, your, and, and okay. put your game into it. You know, and that's what it's designed to do. But for, for somebody okay. like me, it messes them up. <laughs> you don't play by the rules, right, John? <laughs> um, will, will there be a PAL 50 hertz version of Alien Abduction? Well, the that I read in that source code when I was had his source code in inside my source code I saw that it supported PAL but you'd have to ask Dave that but okay I, I saw uh, that Circus Convoy code. has a 50 hertz I think so it it probably will and then, then in my version that I had the 16k version I did that it was you know NTSC okay. PAL 50 and PAL 60 Okay, so very, very, very likely, let's say. Yeah, that, I'm that sure will. Dave did. You'd have to ask him. Yeah. Um, what, what was your experience having your game as a digital download on the Atari VCS 800 platform, Dianoid says? Or was it just hands-off, you handed the game and you didn't get any feedback? What was, what was yeah, it like? Right. Well, it wasn't like some complicated process, you know, like, you know, I talked to the, the uh, David uh, Page and, he, you know, he has some people test it and then they send you a bunch of paperwork to sign, you know, go through all this process and then you give them the ROM and they go and test it and they go create the page that you see on the thing and then, and then, I, and then I didn't really get any feedback, like the only way I would feedback on it would be to go to Atari. Like, yeah. like, like if somebody was wanted the same to explain about the VCS, they would go to Atari. It's, it's really <laughs> kind of strange. Well, now that they're owned by yeah, Atari, kind of, I guess it's not strange, but it seems strange before. Not, not strange anymore. Right. <laughs> Yeah, it it's it's it sounds very similar to my experience in my experience putting a game on the VCS. You just send them the ROM and yeah. sign papers and off it goes. Right. Yeah. Right, but it was like, you know, when you do it uh, in other places you would get reviews or how many stars or so there was like none of no oh, right. there's like no feedback. So I'm like, I don't know, is it a <laughs> is it a bomb or is it not? People like it, do they hate it? Do they find a bug? I have no idea. That's true. And you don't really, there's no top 10 games. There's, you don't know what's going on, right? right. You just hope for the best. <laughs> yeah, 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 right. You don't see like the top seller list or anything or, yeah. 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 yeah maybe one day. Uh, let's see. Let's see if I have any more questions left. Um, oh, Latom. Uh, asks, uh, I would be interested to know if the social dynamic that John Van Ryzen had with the other members of the early Atari, uh, early 80s Activision team still carries over to Audacity Games today. Uh, in Weird Al's band, the keyboardist joined the band in the early 90s when everyone else together was together since the early 80s, and to this day he's still the new guy. And, and you came on a little bit later in Activision, so are you still the new guy for David Crane? <laughs> I guess, yeah. Well, but I was, but I was the junior guy even within the group of people I was with before I went to Activision, right? So the, the they were all more experienced than I was. The, the the other people I worked with. So when I went to Atari, I was like the most, or I mean, uh, Activision. I was the most junior person there, I think. I was only like, <laughs> yeah. like twenty two, and I and I made like one. I made two. Apple II games, so like, it was amazing. <laughs> thing I got the job. But... <laughs> oh, no. It's all oh, level twelve. Oh. <laughs> yeah, oh. yeah. Oh, the pain. 
Uh, level 12. He's all in, the, improving. All the You're pain. Improving. I think part of the reason why you don't need a manual, though, is there is this, like, kind of rhythm you get into where you, like, learn as you play, right? Like, you sort of clear the first level. Yeah. Because, of course, I've cleared the first level now many times. <laughs> You're an expert you, at the first level. Well, you, but you also start to gauge, like, how, oh, do I need this? Like, it's really elegant in a way because it's, like, as you play it, you just sort of slowly learn. And then you kind of, like, can beat yourself up if you don't perform because you know you need those lives for later man there's no way you're like i mean this game does throw a lot at you but it does progressively add things in as you go as as most good games do it feels right? like th maybe this is the wrong metaphor but it almost feels like a wrinkled sheet and you're just slowly ironing and you start to figure out okay i figured out this first part okay i got this next part i got this next part lots of replayability in that way oh, right 100 percent and and it you always strive for better time, faster, you know, getting keeping more lives as you get to level 10, 12, 15. And the something yeah. I have learned from being a lifelong gamer is failure is part of the process. That's right. Truly. You learn from failure. Well, that's you, you, yeah. if you if you're mad about failing in a game, like cool. you, you probably shouldn't play games. <laughs> Cuz you're going to fail it. more than you'll succeed like this le oh, see this? <gasps> you did it. I've see, never like, been able to do that like, without I, being damaged. But see like it's like ironing. I've learned how to iron out that little bit, and now I have to learn more and see this. Oh, you almost made it. I almost uh, made it. So but. I'm at. If there's any more questions, post them in the chat before uh, we wrap up here, because I'm okay, out of okay. questions. Is there anything we missed that you wanted to touch on, John? Um, <clears throat> about this game, obviously it's being released tomorrow. Uh, yeah, it's it's on cool. sale at Audacity's website. That's very exciting, and I'm so glad to have you on today for the release tomorrow. It's going to be released in box in three different formats, very similar to Circus Convoy, different different levels of uh, you know feelies, add-ins, bonus stuff. You can get the basic box for yeah, sixty, yeah, and the, it goes up I from love, there. I love the poster they made. The poster is so cool. Did you see the poster that they made? Where it's like a 1950s. Oh. Uh, oh, science, science, fi science fiction movie. There's a poster that you get free in the game. Oh no, I have. Yes, that's right. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I think that looks. Good. That's that's awesome. So, and to and anything we missed, John. No, that wraps it up. I appreciate you having me as a guest. It was fun. Oh no problem. It was it was a a pure joy to have you on, and. Um, and I, and I obviously want to thank you so much for coming on Zero Page Homebrew. And I searched online for any other video interviews or any video at all of you, of any talks, and I came up completely empty. So it's it's an absolute honor to have you on the show yeah, well, to I, talk I, with us. I think I only, I think I only <laughs> even did like a very few uh, magazine interviews either. I don't know why, but I guess I was shy when I was young. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I, I'm glad you uh, came out of your shell. <laughs> no, you did. You did awesome. It, it was great. That's a beautiful it, it, game, John. So much fun. I've never played this before, and I'm like, oh, the the, the highs and lows that I'm experiencing <laughs> right now, man. It's like, oh, <laughs> level twelve. I will beat level twelve. See, this is the nature of the addiction of alien abduction. Is yes. you you're challenging yourself. You're like, okay, you have a new personal best, and then you can rate yourself based off of how you did last time, right? Oh, we have a we have a, f a f couple questions before you go. They just posted them. Uh, oh yes, uh, do you have what is the future of you and the Atari Twenty Six Hundred? Are there more ideas? Is there something in the works? Have you talked to Audacity about maybe another game? Yeah, well, you know, Audacity. Uh, Dan was talking about that with me at that retro show, and I, then I, yeah. I was like, I told you earlier, like. Uh, Oh yeah, well I'm gonna I could do a game where you go like this with the joystick, but you know something that doesn't require a lot of this or diagonal. So I told yeah. I told him I would think about it, but like you know, it was it was it was way more interesting experience doing it than I thought it was going to be. To be honest with you, it's completely different it's, it's than a, making a modern game. 
You know, I mean, I can make my, I can make <laughs> oh, a modern yeah. game all by myself. I can make a 3D thing in Unity. I can model 3D model. I can make wow. Photoshop. I can program in about, I don't know, I lost track of how many computer languages. You know, but that was <laughs> completely different than doing this. It's, you know, somebody else wrote all the stuff, you know. And this yeah. is like deep I, in the I, computer, I, you know. Yeah, you're making pixels go on the screen directly. <laughs> right. It's it's I I find it fascinating. The 2600 is like no other system and it's and it's like solving a puzzle every time you program. I I just I just love it. Well, it and I think that what draw, draws people to this system. Yeah, but can you imagine like the guy who invented this chip, he probably couldn't even fathom that this many games could be even made on it, right? Like Oh. But thousands, <laughs> thousands. There's, uh, I'll give well, you no, statistics. But I like There's about doing things that he didn't even think was possible with the chip he made. Is what, is oh. what I would guess. Oh. Every year there's there's innovations with the 2600. I kid you not, because I, that's what we play on this show is new 2600 games, and there's uh, over a hundred every year new 2600 oh. games made. That's my boy. It's it's absolutely astounding. Um. Uh, one last question. This one is from Vitoko. Uh, why does the lady turn her back when rescued? <laughs> <laughs> because this... it, it's easy to do in code. You're like she's got to do something when she's rescued. Like you know, but to, uh... to animate her, I like I didn't have a tool to make art in this game. I like was doing I was doing it on graph paper and till about right like more than halfway through it. So I was like, oh, she's got to do something when you go up to her. And I was like, yeah, well, in code, I can make her flip from one, you know, vertically yeah. or horizontally. With one bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So I cheated. I cheated. Very, <laughs> very, very, very easy, uh, easy animation to do, which right. is a nice thing that uh, the 2600 can do. Right. Well, it's it's been an absolute honor uh, to have you on the show and to talk with you uh, about your your new game, Alien Abduction, and I uh, I can't wait for people to get it into their hands. Those lucky few that went to Korgscon uh, a little while back got uh, early the early release of the box right. in their hands, and uh, I hope a lot of people get to experience this game because it's uh, it's a lot of fun. If you love Hero, you'll love this as well. It's really great. Thanks. I really appreciate the kind words about my work. <laughs> well, th well, thank you for coming on, and uh, we will uh, talk with you online. All right. And we'll talk with you soon. Thanks, John. Bye. Bye. Thank bye. You so much. bye. <laughs> bye, John. <laughs> Can you get crushed by that thing? I really wonder. Oh, I gotta go back to the game screen, actually. Oh. There we go. Uh, crushed. Oh, yes. Okay, by I haven't the, been crushed horse. yet by it. That one's but I'm like, fairly easy to avoid, thankfully. But I'm like, oh. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Look, we're at level 11, and I got how many uh, hearts still? Like, we're getting we're getting there, dude. Chat we now. are getting there. Sorry. In your Holy way. cow! And that's okay. That's okay. Out of the way. That's okay. You're gonna take over after this. Yeah. And we're gonna see I played it some in a few months. Some well, higher level actually, play game play. Play. It's that's actually not possible to play higher oh, level than pro me. tip from Double Down: is, Avoid flashing red walls. It's the only thing. Like I just think this is a world record playing <laughs> over here. Oh, 12. Nice. Yeah, this is where I keep this dying. Okay. Um, I find this one, but I gotta, I gotta, I at least have the. I at least have the uh, the resources for it. So this is oh you do. I don't oh, think I've made it past hits. this guy yet, but it's you gotta like, lure him over and uh, then drop down. Okay. Oh, he's gone now. So. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. See now I get scared because I don't know what's what's what the future holds. That's the true. unknown. Fuck this guy. Yeah, that's what I do. I just go past right past. Uh, him. Uh, no. Land. See, oh. 
minutes. Oh. Okay, but level 13, level 13. Okay, PB, PB. PB. Yeah, your PB. energy depletes so fast in this game. Oh it is God. absolutely Well, there's brutal. multiple things you need to sort of like gauge, right? Like you need to yes. gauge your energy values. But you where do. do I go? Left or right, just uh, pick. Uh, go, where do I go. Oh, go. is it really? Just go, just go. Go through this thing? Up, up. No, oh, up, up, up. 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 Ah. Okay, see, Shoot I didn't it. know, I didn't know, quick. I didn't know. Okay, come on, come on, come on. Okay, get okay. That yellow thing really quick. <laughs> okay. Next okay. Okay. Thing. Come on. No. No. Okay. Okay. Up. 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 <laughs> up. 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 Oh, okay. I'm so scared. I'm so scared. I'm gonna keep going up. Keep sure. going up. Keep sure. going up. Okay. Sure. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Down. Down. Okay. We're we're good. Whoa, we're good trap. for a second. Come on. Come on. Come on. There's so many debates in this game. <laughs> this game is all about debating you oh, yeah. into thinking you know what's going on. Okay. That's good. Okay, get that up. red. Get that red. I'm gonna go up. Fly. Up, 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 up. 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 Come on. Come on. <laughs> oh. Scared. Get that I'm so scared. 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 Come on. Get okay. I gotta get. Gotta get. Get the yellow, gotta get the For yellow. Sure. Okay, okay. Okay. Some people say games aren't emotional experiences. Oh. oh. Just so you there know, you I it took every piece of willpower I had not to scream the entire time during the interview. Oh, I'm thank like, goodness. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Okay. No, I was like the, normally I, I I just let oh. my oh. treat ball. Okay, let's enable those again. I just oh. did disable them for the interview because okay. for obvious reasons. Okay, that was that's pretty solid for a guy who's never played this game before, getting a level thirteen. Yeah. Oh, that was good. Not one to pat myself on the back, but I, this game feels like you I didn't know what you, to expect, but you thirteen earn every every little bit. So things are enabled now. Uh I didn't set up the gambling yet. We some late stream gambling. Yes, we because, but we came up with something for Atari. How many G -G, treats yes. in a minute he can Ooh, get Okay. with the bell. This is a win-win for our homie over here. But I, <laughs> but I haven't set up the over-under yet. Okay. But if I play for a bit and then give it back to you, I can set up the over-under. Oh, do you want me to do one more run? No, no, no. Okay, I want to do one. Cool. Give you a rest a bit. I need right? a rest. Good game, Erlen. Yes. G -G. So if you want to do the treat ball, it is now active. See if I can get my sea legs again on this. Oh yeah, it'll, it'll happen fast, man. This is definitely a game where if you have experience in it, like I triggered it already. <laughs> Gamma Dev, yo. <laughs> there we go. Oh, damn it. It's okay. You just paused because of the thing, which yeah. You'll actually survive, I think. The brutal thing about this is you only get the extra lives at the very beginning of the game, yeah, and you... it's just a dearth of no extra lives. Save your arm, Marilyn. Yeah. <laughs> Don't actually, do what honestly, John did. I honestly even feel it from like <laughs> even just a little bit. I'm like, oh, what a legend, man! What a oh, what a legend. God. Also, it was just an a... absolute honor. I was not even exaggerating to talk to these amazing developers that have made these these games that formed. Our early, oops, I was trying to share. Our early experience. I'm here to rescue you. <laughs> We're here to rescue you. Uh, every time out. Man, I, did I it. think I only made it maybe once or twice. I managed to pull that off. That is deadly. You never forget that. Running one, into that, that's a brutal one. One of the OG game that's programmers. Brutal. Yeah, man. Well, also just like <clears throat> such a kind of like I, this is a weird thing to say, but I immediately felt it. It's like what a just a kind soul. You oh, know yeah. what I mean? Like you talk to some people and you're like, wow, this is uh, just a you know? amazing man. Yeah. yeah, really cool to you know get to hear his point of view and stories i could listen to that guy talk all day man it's <laughs> oh, crazy yeah. he's never done any interviews really that's i know i was so surprised i was like okay let's look up what he said before i don't want to cover old ground or anything it's like nope he's never done an interview before and you would Ever. never you would never know it this is incredibly well spoken and great he's, storyteller yeah he's got stories for days right from from back in the day but it was such an honor to be like the first person to ever do a video interview of him. I, I still can't believe that. What a, And what an amazing little North Star he gave with that experience of the first game he developed. He was focusing on everything but the gameplay. And then what what bore, like, birthed Hero was like, no, all gameplay. And then we'll <laughs> yes. figure out the aesthetics after. That's true. Um, and what an interesting, like, design oh, pillar, just... right? To begin with, no, the fundamental. We're going to begin as our design pillar gameplay. Yep. And then everything else will follow the aesthetics, the design. Yep. The... And I think a ho homebrew developers really understand that now 
Oh, and I think that's also pretty pretty typical industry practice now. Yeah, you, you know? gotta have core gameplay first. It's like, what is gonna make this game good? Gameplay first, story, and sort of aesthetic second, which is like amazing that he was so early in the industry that he was basically intuitively discovering something that is like a core value now of game yeah. design. Oh, and just yeah. on the ground floor. Also, just imagining like doing doing it through punch cards. Like, these are all debates. Brutal. These are all no, none of this yeah, matters. It's that doesn't all, matter. Even that doesn't matter. Who cares? <laughs> See, I never did this thing. I just killed that guy. But I think that might have hurt me in the big picture. Yeah, it's slow to kill that guy because it takes a long time. Yeah, and then you lose oh, the thing. Geez. But also, like you lost health because you got damaged from yeah. it, you have to balance these two parameters in this game right it's really like oh and it's different this one doesn't hurt you on the sides the other one does so it's like yeah and he's following the um this thing is oh, brutal because once it once it catches you there's no level nine not bad for the for first the first run first man do, do another one help there's something wrong with the stream eight minutes ago unleash the treat ball oh why didn't we hear it Oh, you know why? They did, but well, we didn't. Because then... our earphones are still plugged in. <laughs> oh, yo, sorry guys. Yeah, the treat ball's coming. Treat ball's coming. There, now we should hear all the alerts. Okay, let's get the treat ball. He was scratching at the box earlier. I gave him some treats before yeah. the show because I knew he would be Jones in for it. Uh, Nostalgic does ask an interesting question about like on the end of the previous level could you have fallen through the red ball to a screen uh, where when the friend is. So like that one debate ball I'm curious if you can do it so try to do it next time. Fall through a to another screen? Did you remember? It's unlikely. It's unlikely but let's just, just do the do a test. Do you remember what screen it? Oh yeah. Like, it's, level? Oh yeah well, well it's obvious right it's the one where like she's right there but like there's 10. like um Oh, right. But there's yeah, a yeah, ball yeah. underneath that's kind of like, it doesn't really matter at that point. True. So let's test it. Hey, buddy. <laughs> Level eight. Do I need to put a top on or is it? Yes, yeah, sorry. It's up there. Thanks. At least sorry. it pauses you. Before you start each level, you can. Uh... Oh, God. Why did it go? Oh, one already fell out. Hey, buddy, don't worry. Don't worry. It's a very oh, loose... Oh, it fell through. <laughs> okay, but don't worry, Atari. Don't <laughs> We're getting worry, it. buddy. <gasps> Bam. Level eight, I think. Yeah, we'll see it immediately, though. It's yeah, I, very I, obvious. Every time I saw it, I'm like, that's the jibate ball. Because <laughs> you don't need it. But I'm. But like, what happens if we get it? We gotta... Yeah, so this is basically a 16K game uh, with a lot of um, add-ons. All those uh, extra audacity add-ons, like the QR code, the high scores, all that stuff. Um, instructions, maybe? I never looked at the instructions. I was just playtesting the actual game itself when I was doing the playtesting. Ah! Faster. A lot of these things you can just like fall through so many levels and just avoid a bunch of stuff yeah. like that. You don't need to stop and you kinda for need, the guy. And except for that, again, it's got that like, lava you can land in, right? <laughs> but you have to know yeah. it. When you know, yeah. when you know, you know. That's right. And another thing is... Oh, hardest. It's, it's such a tight squeeze. And you lose energy so fast. Oh, in, it's brutal. In this level in particular. Because there's energy and then there's health. Yeah. And... Uh, this one you can if you duck down immediately you can you got do, it you yeah but it. then you have to do the top one if you if you miss it, it. takes a little bit of while yeah if you miss it it's game over i that game was over, i man. was i literally hit that screen like maybe five times before i solved that problem hero was 8k i looked it up before the show hero was 8k and this is this is 16 plus many places this one you can go over there while you're waiting for the thing to Yeah, explode. but it's again like it's like it doesn't really matter. It's just not much risk of Oops, never mind. Ah Bastard. Yeah. This, this joystick's a little loose for this game. It might be better with a tighter joystick because you need to do like really kind of fast up down movements. And sometimes the joystick will bounce and you'll it'll do something you don't want it to do. <clears throat> You just lure them over like that. It, it bounced and it. This one you just rip through. Right? <laughs> rip through right like to the end. Some, some of these that levels are not worth like. 
don't waste your time, right? <laughs> yeah, just just fly through it. In fact, it almost like some of these levels really. This game really Gosh. is designed to be rushed. Like yeah, it's it's a fly through game. It's in the faster. It's always the joy. It's <laughs> yeah, always the joy. The faster you can go, the better. Jibated. Oh! See, it's about the same, I think, because by the time you've retrieved that, you've lost about as much. Yeah. Like, I did both ways, and I've completed them totally fine. So I think, in a way, I actually just, when I was playing it the, the last time, I just ran through it because it's like, may as well. Yeah. Some of them, you just like, don't don't bother. Yeah. Like, but always... the energy is so important. Oh, it's so important. But don't waste Well, So your... this is one where they're curious. Just try it out and see what happens. I think it's nothing. Yeah, yeah, it's nothing. But worth. You do get points. For oh, that red. so that is like. But the, you don't from get from that point of view. <sighs> but you don't get um, extra lives based on score. I don't believe. You only get lives based on getting a heart. So. Ugh. Oh yeah, that one hurts. That one does hurt. Yeah, try not to get shot. <laughs> If there's already something on the level, like um, Good. a heart or something, or an enemy, there's not going to be another enemy. Yeah. So you know if you've already taken something out, you're going to be safe. <clears throat> oh, hey, buddy. He's like, the, the, the well. <laughs> oh, the source. <laughs> He's like, the spring, I will take it. <laughs> the spring's eternal with... With treats, give the to me. The holy grail. <laughs> yeah. the, the, the gold <laughs> upon the dragon sits. Go. Yeah, I've never been crushed by that, but I guess you can get They're it. fairly easy to avoid. They're mostly like, just like slow downs. They just slow you down. Oh, He's oh, like, yeah. I found the real treat ball. <laughs> Square treat ball. He's like, the treat ball. That's, all so that's right. That's the real lesson. <laughs> Like, see there's something there? There won't be something coming out if I land there. And there's already something there, another one won't come out. Because he's adhering to the Activision style of programming, uh, where things won't flicker. But if there's nothing there, <laughs> beware. I'm gonna switch back. That's the thing. <clears throat> Oh, it destroyed me. Oh, whoa. See, this is, I, I hit just a brick wall with that one that was a terrible. number of times. I mean, that, that, was... that point is the point that I lost this so game. So many lives, yeah. Multiple Level times. 12, yeah. Um, and it was it's that first screen, that zombie just killed me multiple, multiple times. Yeah, he's brutal. You kind of want to learn to the left a bit, I guess. Atari Cat, no. <laughs> Up. This was the scariest level. You have to be up oh, a bit, geez. yeah. Again, the debate. This game is so many debates. It is all <laughs> it's over just the place. Constantly, it's constantly like tricking you into. It, I'm not gonna go for that one. Yeah, sometimes you gotta just keep moving. Don't go up the middle. Oh, actually, the middle was fine. Or was but it? But you would miss the yellow if you went up the middle. You'd have to backtrack a bit. That's the thing. I kind of want that <laughs> honestly i don't know if I you're really it. good you don't need to get it right if you're like expert you're like i'm not going to get hit you don't need to get reds oh what the oh, i didn't mean to do that at all that was not a joystick move i did <laughs> oh what the you just oh, got, I got hit. stuck did i get hit i don't think so i think i got crushed a tiny I got bit still pretty good oh i'm getting that Yes, you. Oh my God! Every you time that. you see a heart, get there's the no. Heart. This game is built upon the hearts. Hearts, minds, hearts and minds. <laughs> <Okay, no. laughs> Level fourteen. Okay, good. You're, Whoa! You're oh my God! You got to somehow so circumnavigate close. this insanity. No, Holy that was actually pretty shit! Easy. It's a lot. It looks like a brutal, but not too bad. Yeah, the. Uh, After a while, you get used to, like, oh, that's going to come there. That's going to come out because of that. This style that said John being the only playtester might explain some of the difficulty. <laughs> yeah, because when you're the only... Okay, I know this could be a dude down there. Oh, when you're the only playtester, it gets 
easier because you're good at it, but then you overestimate how That's exactly right easy, or how easy it is when it's actually hard. But you know, people want hard games. They well, don't want too hard. Why well, I, I always say this take on the show. It's not the first time I've said it, but like that's yeah. kind of what make these games. Be, they they don't have as many levels, but because the levels are harder, you have more gameplay. Yes. You know, like you think about games now have so many levels, but all those levels are pretty easy. Mm, yeah. You know, like you, you, a lot of open world games, it's like. <laughs> and do you do you want to play forever to try and get so far when it's like, oh, I'd rather play maybe a shorter game, that's, but harder. That ramps and you really feel accomplished when you finish it because it's the other thing too is some games are just like if you just dump time into them you're eventually beat them but they're not hard games you know this level's kind of a gimme actually oh yeah but that's the interesting thing is that not all <laughs> levels are the same no space force what's, what's that mean back four i don't know i haven't read the manual <laughs> what does it mean I, I john have, i have the manual. john where's john <laughs> john come I, back tell us respect for means i did good um at level 20 20 is the end okay which unlocks New game Tons plus. more levels. 60 oh. more levels. What the? So 80 yeah. level game? 80 levels. Yeah. Good luck. I've I've died. Oh. I've died on the 20th level, but not made it past that. Whoa. Which, yeah, like, it just gets harder and harder. And then you, and you always got to start back at the beginning. Like, that's the thing about this game, man. Now you're racing the clock, I believe. Oh, yeah. Oh. That was just like a... another debate. Yeah, yeah, because I used up more, <laughs> more time. I'm probably not ahead at all. This is what this game is all about: is debating you into like oh, collecting on. one thing when you should have collected another. Like, come on, need to speed up. There we go. There we go. I don't need that health. Exactly. Didn't need that. Well, yeah, that's... it's interesting. It's points, but it's like, who cares? Let's. If we can't even beat yeah. the game, who cares? <laughs> Unless you points? can beat the game, points don't matter. Once you beat the game, speed run, then the high matter. score record. And it depends. If you're going for a speed run, which is another accomplishment, that's true. Which it does record. Or what if like speed run with the highest score combined? Oh well, that's your king then, right? But you want the double champ status. Come on, every time. I'm, I'm mismanaging the joystick. Oh, this zombie. guy. This Last zombie. Time. I think there's two on this level. In your so. face, zombie. Yeah. Uh-oh. But as soon as you go on the level, you're you're committed, right? You, you, you gotta go. Yeah, this is one where you cannot hesitate. Well, there is, like, kind of... It's interesting how there's some levels in this game that are like just, like, the hardest thing you've ever played. And other ones <laughs> yes. are kind of like, oh, I've sort of already done this. Yeah, I know, I know I the get tactic this from for this the, one. From the other one. <laughs> Speedrunning at good... Da good games done quick should be GGDQ I think, but uh, good games done quick win. <laughs> well, may well, or people games can do quick. this. Games done quick. I thought it was yeah. good games, but maybe it's just games know. done quick. <sighs> Level eighteen. There are images for a bell and a a cat, but not for a tree ball. Ooh, I'll have to do that. Yeah, get the ball. Because I already have an image. Okay. I think for the I do have an image for the tree ball. There's, okay. That's slow. Level okay. eighteen. See if we can hit 20, man. 20 would be sick. You have It gets, like, the levels get really long, especially these upward ones. Ramps. They're so far up. You have to just blast through them and just collect, collect, collect. Keep your... And this one, luckily, you can... Uh... And there we go. It's interesting where you get points oh in this God. game. Jibated. Oh, I did. Oh, <laughs> I did. Brutal. It's okay. It's okay. It's what this, what's this, this game's all about. Yep. Should I get it? Yeah, yeah you have to. I, I don't think to. you have a choice. Yeah, sometimes you just. I soak. mean, that one's. A, some of them are like like a by necessity. Oh, um, again, another one where it's like. Gonna get in it. the big picture, like. It depends how low you are. Like you might get a little boost. Yeah, right? and it's like, and the, or it's sometimes it's. I wonder with this game how much it's just about the same, like. Bastard, stop. Yeah. Oh, oh! That I didn't see coming because it was open. Oh, come on. When I landed. What do I need? Oh, it's over. 18. But like, oh. totally, but again, totally different game, <clears throat> right? Like, most of the games GDQ aren't very good. 
This would be a and good also speed most run. of the like great speedrunners can't necessarily pull off their best time at GDQ, right? No, it, you get a lot of pressure. I yeah. was watching the uh, oh, what was it? Was the Tetris, the Tetris, um, video? What was I gonna do? I was gonna set up the set up the the jambling. Yes, I think that one of those things too with it is that like you know a lot of the speedrunners by like the necessity of the role, it's like you're doing the greatest time ever like what are the odds that you're going to do the greatest time ever on like a tuesday <laughs> very that, little you know especially when you just have like an entire takes like an entire like so much practice to get good at these games okay over under on atari bell ringing and we're going to go for no, I just landed on the laser beam. That can't be good for your health. <laughs> Five Both to literally. What are we gonna do? One, one to four. Five to six. Six to. Six to eight. And eight plus. Let's try that. Ugh. Mission period two minutes. Yep, that's good. Okay, so we are set up now for the bell ringing. We're gonna try it out. This is the okay. first trial run. Oh, <laughs> dude, that was like After air, oh, that, that was, was like close one. literally a millisecond less death. Oh wait, you're done this level. Speedrunners are pretty play pretty conservatively on there. Better to guarantee yourself a pretty good run time than risks dying bad run. That's true. Yeah. And I, I'm sure it's the same with athletes. They don't want to go all out until unless you're like at the Olympics or like really high level. Okay, don't go yet. Yeah, yeah, I'm not gonna go. It's um yeah. It's also sort of like it's also why like um doing things is so hard, right? Because it's like it doesn't matter how good you are, and you're like you know basement like trying to perform <laughs> at like it's like that's kind of like what Pressure. that's what makes like a professional athlete incredible is there's a lot of like people who can probably even play as good as a professional but can they under the pressure yeah oh Cause yeah that's the difference like, there's crowds there's other people and like top level people competing against you which also does help you too yeah where it's like i gotta do that and do you know how to ramp up your practice to a point where you're at your peak for that moment yeah. too because whenever do like i i do 5k runs once in a while yeah but when it comes to the actual 5k i go all out and i my times are way better than any practice that i ever do yeah because you well you have that extra like you just have that extra like gas oh. tank you do yeah and there's people running beside you and i find like a, a person to pace oh. oh i just caught the end of that one Will it be really hungry for a trial run? No. We could give it a bit. See, like with this one, like I, I don't necessarily know if like that. I might, I might probably be not starving. But the thing that is, one. is like once I, once I get past it, like, oh, oh, oh death, <laughs> just death, <laughs> death is upon us. Because I think it goes down. Oh, oh. oh that's just straight up death. No, wow. it's not. I'm just, I'm just mistiming it. Oh. Like it's totally fine. I'm oh. just, I'm just playing bad. The graphics in this game are uh, astounding. Also, it's kind of one of sometimes it's like a it's like a slide. Like you know, what you, you once you start doing bad, you do really bad. <laughs> oh yeah, you just whoa, because you just feel like uh, I'm not doing good anymore, and you you start yeah. taking risks. It's like a psychological component. <clears throat> and now that I've like, oh, he wants treats. He's sniffing the treat ball. If you want to go for it, we and oh, he's batting at it. Oh, because it's in the box. No, nope, you'll get treats soon. You'll get treats soon. Actually, there's... Hey, buddy. Oh, no, it's just loose. But there's... Oh, oh, oh he wants part. treats. I think he's he's raring for treats. You want treats? Is it random? Oh. Uh, we're using the Bratwurst joystick. Oh, I'm, it might be a bit loose. I might change it up to a double-down joystick uh, and see how that works out. Hey, mister. So somebody wants to trigger the treats. Hey, mister. The bells. Mr. We can we can do the bells because Atari is begging for treats, so I think it might be a good time. It's a great time to do that. 
It's time for a jamble. Let me see if it's... I'm pretty sure it's on. Oh, it's... Yeah. It's on. It's on. Trigger treat time, if you dare. It's oh treat God. time. Yum, yum, <gasps> yum, yum, yum. Oh, yeah, you haven't heard that in a while. Vitoko. Vitoko triggers it. Which color should we use? Let's see how good... I like blue sound. This today. one's a little... This one's a little easier to ring. Okay, let's do, we found let's he do, was having some trouble let's last time. Let's do the pink. Okay. Wait, hold on. Is One's fun easier yet? and harder to ring? I didn't say that. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. If we could go back in time. <laughs> this is... Uh, oh, a revelation. Oh, no. Never tested it before. Oh, no. The secret's There was an advantage. There was an advantage that a cat had. Okay, so let me explain it. Atari has one minute to ring the bell. Every bell, every ring, he gets a treat. And we add one to the score. And at the end of one minute, that's when it gets cut off. And we add it up. So I there's mean, the over-under on there. This is just a win-win-win game it's, for you. It was God. always a win-win It's literally win for these like cats. encourages gluttony. That's what it does. And so the categories are one to four, five or six, Six, six to eight, eight, or eight plus. And what, for one minute? One minute. He one got, minute's a long time. One minute's a lot of rings, right? How got, many, on average, five. on average, how many rings do you think he could do? He got five. In per, yeah. Last time. Okay, okay. I think it was five. Yeah. It, it was five at the minute So what's mark. that? That's one ring every, like, 12, 11 seconds, 12 seconds <sighs> then, right? Yeah, 12 seconds. Okay, one ring every okay. 12 seconds. We'll get a little so average he might be slower because he had some. You know, he like, might be more eager because you know, he hasn't done it in a you know, while. Like the De Niro character in Casino where he's like, he knows all of the like insides. He knows <laughs> like this guy's... We just discovered like a De Niro level knowledge that's a that's factor. Right. Like Who knew that the one bell was easier to ring than the Huge other? close up on the bell. <laughs> it would just be like, he'd be like, every time he bet, he knew to look at which color bell was... <laughs> he was like, he always went for the pink. <laughs> Nobody knew. <laughs> what is this? What is this? Two times? What is this two times thing? Tier three sub. Infinite bites? What's going on? Well, I, I can't bet. So that's just me, I think. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. So we've got some bets on eight plus. Oh, we've got bets across the board. Look okay. This handsome devil on this. Oh. <laughs> Look at this guy. This He's John. So... Oh, that John. I'm not talking about the cat. <laughs> now is this this nice photo of John over there? I was like, what? Is... Yeah. Holy yeah, that's cow. That's John. Okay, bets are off. We've covered all the different uh, betting mm. options. Okay, okay. So seventy percent is leaning towards six to eight. So... Go treat time. I'm sorry that Sprite's name is still up there, but that's uh, that's what happens. I this is all new stuff. We're now. still figuring it out, man. Yeah, we're still figuring it out. Uh, but we we got to calculate the rings per second. Right? It pretty much comes out to that. Or or, right? or 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 probably rings per second is wrong. How many seconds per ring is the in a minute? We gotta mm, we gotta get our average yeah. like, a, like DPS damage per second. <laughs> damage What's our per like? Second. We can start to like uh, really see like how many rings on average does our guy do. So I'm gonna get up on yeah, our RPS stats. Yeah, RPS rings yes, per second. Yes. Uh, what's our RPS, my guy? Wait, let's find out. <laughs> uh, countdown. Hey. Okay, so we got hey. a timer here. We're gonna do one minute. I think this makes a sound, so we should be able to hear it. Okay, if you want to put it down, I will start the timer as soon as... Actually, this timer starts as soon as he hits the bell. Yes. We'll okay. do that because that's much easier. As soon as he rings the first oh, do ring. We have, hold up. Oh, we'll put it, we'll put it in the oh, middle. No, get, got, oh, you got the treats? I gotta give him treats. Okay. Yeah, no, <laughs> it touches my your foot. sock. So cute. I'll touch anything. There we go. And we're off. 59 seconds left. Here we go. I just toss it in the other room. No, no Chad. Toss it near the bell. Oh, I toss will. Toss it near the bell. We've got to be consistent. That's two. Oh, gotta add them up. He's got two now. Put the keyboard away. Three. He's got 42 seconds left. Let's get some calculations from chat after this is he's done. He's a little bit ahead of five right now, I think. A little bit ahead. Oh, he's slowing down. He's th oh, he missed. Got to get the bell. Got a reach problem. Just calculate nope, a distance off. He's got up to four. I think that slowed him down to about pace of five. Well, we could get six in here. He could get six. 
Oh, he's up to five, and I think the betting was five or six. Six got to eight. 15 seconds. Oh, six to eight. Oh, he's got 11 seconds to make it to six to eight. He's up to six. He's not going to make it to eight, but he's got six seconds. Five, four. He's going to make it to seven, two, one. Oh, just under the bell. Okay, so we need, I think, seven. I think we need to have um, not six to eight. We need to have six, seven. You know yeah. what I mean? Just because knowing, if, if we're looking at the, uh, the, the, you know, the TPS, like the, <laughs> we're looking at the, the RPS, Good man. Kidding. We okay. got to. Some more consolation treats. You know, because if, if he's, if he's on average hitting like maybe five to seven, like then six and seven yeah. both need to be their own. It will start getting adjusted. Yeah, we're going to have to kick it up a bit. Thank goodness it wasn't six. There might have been a riot. <laughs> yeah, we'll put an on-screen timer as well because that's important because you guys need to see the... Need to know what's going on. What the crap? I picked six to eight, but I didn't think it took my bet. Oh, no. Oh, no. Well, we're going to dole it out. Let's see, uh, see how that worked out. Okay. Yeah, that's the thing. 70% of people got it correct. Well, they knew. But that's the thing is that six to eight is such a confident because if you think about it, it's like it last time he got five. Out. So then six, seven, or eight are all like. So let's dole it out and let's kind of write down what needs to happen next time. So I'm bringing up a notepad here. Yeah. Where's my notepad? Oh, there it is. So, what? I had someone said, but it's five to six, six to eight. Yeah, what happens if it rolls six? Is oh the, no, was it five to question. six? Yeah. Oh well. Or is it? Was it? Or that just? Oh, that I was. Don't, I don't good. remember. We were, you know, we're doing. Oh, it was six. To <laughs> yeah. So if it were six, it'd be like, no. What it'd do be, we do? Be a lot of trouble. I, I don't know. I wouldn't give anything out. I, I think one to four, and then maybe like five, six, seven, eight, nine plus, something like that. And that might be. We too don't many. want too many categories. Um, so like a five, five six, uh, one to four, and then a five six. But then and then it's five. seven to eight. Yeah, five. Five to six, seven, to eight, nine plus. But you nine. know what I mean. But I kind of feel like um, I almost think because of how you think he'll always make five. I kind of do. Well, then that should one be to five. like one to five. Yeah, then. and then I think six, seven should be separate because I think the Ooh, odds of him getting yeah. those and then eight and then eight, nine plus would be like, that's a nice spread. Okay, so one to five. So eight, sorry, you just did. Yeah. One to five is a category, then a six by itself, a seven by itself, an eight, an eight by itself, then a nine, nine plus. plus. And it feels really solid to me because I think on average he's going to probably most of the time get between five and nine. So it's good to have the like that really each one, separated each out. one separate. If we're, if we're looking yep. at be our poker, got it. We're right. looking at yeah. RPS, you know, as it's uh, it's important. <laughs> we got to think about the RPS. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's that's what's going to happen next time, and we'll try that out, adjust as necessary, or SPR seconds per ring. Yeah, it could it's be probably more of an you SPR because rings per second is like he's not running, he's not ringing multiple <laughs> times right. per that second. Yeah, that does it. Would be rings per minute RPM, yeah. dude. RPM, oh, RPM. sounds pretty good. What's his RPM? Oh, What's yeah. his RPM? That's, it. That's the acronym. What's That's his RPM? That's the way to go. We, we, we got to calculate the RPM, guys. <laughs> <laughs> we we, we got to readjust know. the RPM. What's the what's our RPM at? <laughs> okay, okay, we found it. <laughs> so let's go back to the uh, game screen. And so did one you just play you just so played, right? one is the new zero. That's interesting. It's true actually because he always gets one. He always gets because that's his. That's when it starts. So it, that almost automatically boots boosts his up. That's right. That's why it's one to five rather than one to. Four. I think the six, seven, eight is a good call. It just kind of like. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I think so because it's just it's too much. It's well, the, it, well, the six to eight. It's like that's kind of just the average. That's why yeah. seventy percent of people <laughs> picked it because it's like yeah, on average. We're looking at RPMs right here, you know. <laughs> yep. So I'm gonna use the double down joystick because I found it. The other one bounced too much, and this game requires bouncing, like doing an up, a quick down movement, and letting go, which no other game I know uses that tactic. So I think uh, this is gonna be a much better joystick for this. Okay. Let's. What's going on? No. Well, it helps if I plug it into the right port. That's okay. <laughs> there we go. 
Yeah, let's take some stats starting from the show. Well, I think it's interesting to think too about like how many seconds he has between them, right? Like it's just, there's some we can Robert De Niro this thing. Oh yeah. And have the numbers floating by our heads as we look. And then which bell? That's another factor, right? Which bell? Oh yeah. Maybe maybe we gotta standardize the bell, honestly. Well, we're got we started with pink. We're gonna stay with pink. Yo! What if you do a coin flip for the bell? After the fact? Before, like, no, but right after everyone's bet, yeah, then after. we do then we do a flip, and that's, like, we, you find out. So, like, oh. just to mix it up, I don't know if that... I means. don't even know if the bells are really that different, but they feel... One feels but just this, slightly... But it, because in a way, it's better. Like, we don't want the, like, the decision to be made if by If you write it down, us. it's science. That's right. This joystick is much better for this game. Yeah, I think it's either... Stiffer. I think either coin flip for the bell or just standardize the bell. That's my yeah. opinion. Because like you don't want to kind of like it to be on us. Because I don't want to give people, I don't want us making the decision and therefore kind of picking someone oh, no, or not, no. you know? Yeah. But. I think you'll like this joystick a lot better for this. Yeah. Oh, every time my foot gets but, tagged but it's, by but that. But the other thing is how much damage do you take, right? Like, See, I'm noticing that like there almost is a random, sometimes these... Sometimes I feel like the the middle one can kill you and the top one mm. can. Sometimes I feel like neither of them can. Am I crazy? Uh, the the um, lava the, walls? The, 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 yeah, the lava walls I feel like have changed. If you hit your head, it doesn't hurt. If you hit the side, it hurts. Yeah. It's very, very interesting. I've been playing a lot of chess with my one of my um, uh, colleagues wanted to start playing chess.com with me. So oh, I've been getting back nice. into playing a lot. I'm currently 6 and 0. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think you need a handicap there. So, um, but <laughs> but he's actually gotten really like the last the thing is he just hung his queen three games in a row, so Oh, hung his queen. Okay. So it's like, you know. Oh, that means where you you give up your queen like you make a mistake and I take the queen, right? Oh, okay. Um poor queen. Um, hang is like you un you don't defend it at a key moment. Is oh, okay. Like, so if you hang a piece, it means you you have an undefended piece that's free to take. Okay. So that's what happened to my poor guy. But he's he's playing better. But it's been fun. I've been getting back into it. Oh, good. I mean, I, I'm sure it gets you uh, practice, even though he's a easier an opponent than you're used to. Oh, definitely. And the thing oh, is, is that like, what? you know, it's a bad death. As good as you think you are, like it's such a brutal game. A bad death. Oh no, not like oh, this. Yeah, as good as you think you are, like if you make one brutal mistake, the game's kind of over. Like that? Yeah. <laughs> this is the thing. Oh, oh, In a way, oh, this game's oh. similar. It's a game of blunders. It is. You yeah. know. And what's interesting there, like the thing about like chess as well is that like it is a game of blunders like if you think about like let's say you horribly blunder like a uh, rally in like tennis like who cares you have another yeah. shot right but it's right. like but it's like the equivalent would be like you brutally lose and then it's like okay so now we like cut a hole in your racket you're like no, <laughs> no. yeah <laughs> like because that is how it is it's so unless you treat every game uh as an independent uh, chess game and then it's like oh I made a mistake in that one but I'll be able to come back yeah. it's the best of seven for sure yeah but like in a game it's like you know you oh can it's make, over make right. one and what's interesting is that he, like that. when I was listening to the guy talk the other day he was sort of talking about how like resigning in chess the grandmasters will resign against grandmasters because you can assume that the, the, the a GM is not going to like Make a mistake, but what's interesting if you have, if you're terrible, playing a low terrible. rated player, it's like it's a joystick I'm not used to. You're like assuming that they'll make no mistakes if you resign, but mm. it's like, but that's almost. But you're kind of betting on them when you resign. You're essentially betting on them making no mistakes, which is like, right. what are the odds of that, right? Because things can change so fast, much like this game where you make one mistake and you're <laughs> done, man. Yeah. It's and and when that over, mistake man. happens, like it's game over, man. So uh, Tanya and I started watching The Mandalorian. Oh, fin finally. Oh yeah, kind <laughs> after, of interesting. Hey, after hearing for years about how good it is, I'm like, and we watched it. And it was like, oh, out of all the it kind actually of is decent. Yeah, it's, out of all this sort of Disney uh, property of Star Wars, it, it it's. It, I think what's nice about it is that it's like they're just kind of. It is just allowed to be it, its own show. Like it it's is. not tied to like. No, they, they, there's nostalgia bait in it, but very little, very um, off to the side. It's not in your face. Yeah. Um, good, good writing. Um, 
they, they set things up, they pay things off. It's not, it's not like obvious, right? It's not like, look, 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 this is going to happen later. Ah, oh, tagged by the, tagged in the foot. Yeah. It's inevitable. We're up to episode, we just finished episode four. You see four. what I mean? How those, neither of these are hurting me, right? Right. That's what I mean by like, I feel like they're, these are um, the randomness of the lava walls. And see now this one's. That could. Could, but some of them You're don't. Hurry. Oh. Oh. Do you know what I mean? Like, I think that's a factor in this game. It is knowing where to run past. past no, but I mean, be careful. but I mean, the walls that hurt you. I feel like it cycles depending on the. Oh really? Yeah, because that wall. I've I've played this a few times now. Like these, that wall sometimes oh, will be will hurt you on different ones because that that's one where I, I'm hyper aware of it because you need to like either play it perfect and not hit the wall, but if there's no um, lava on the wall, you might. Be right, because there's it wouldn't John, be that <laughs> difficult to say that wall is this, that wall is this, or randomize, or this one's always this kind of wall. Yeah, because the way to confirm it is that one which we've hit, hit many a times had no lava walls. Hmm. That, this time I played it, but last time you played it, there was a one of those was a lava wall. Who? That'd be it'd be good to if you are conscious of which one that is. Then, because it's changed, you, we can keep track of it. It's changed a number of times oh. since I played it, um, and so I'm I'm convinced that, that that's a, that's. A I watched fact two or three it. episodes. It just didn't grab me. I may try again and give it more of a chance. Oh, okay. I think, dude, the other thing to nice. keep in mind is that like these Disney <laughs> products are pretty bad. Like, <laughs> in general, yeah. like we're talking bad man so it's like the mandalorian in hindsight is an amazing show yes <laughs> in yeah, comparison in, in to relation like some of these other ones you know um, yeah there's some stuff in it that does kind there's of some, that bugs me a little bit like him just like one v oneing like an entire like oh. and he's like i'm like how like what are you talking about you have like one piece of armor and you're gonna run at this like the yeah. jawa like thing and you're like how is this your plan it's the stupidest idea yeah. I've ever heard. And I, and also Jawas, in my mind, are not really, like... I, I don't know, like, out of in the Star Wars mythology, they're kind of these more peaceful kind of... You know, just murdering Jawas. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, sand yeah. people as well. Like, it they, just... Uh, I get it, but... They steal things, but they're not, like, killing people, right? That's they're, the thing. It's like, they're little scavengers, and I feel like I've always kind of felt like they're in the scheme of, of guys that are more good than bad. And if he... Unless he was completely ignorant of Jawas, which there's no way he could be because they were everywhere in all the episodes. You see Jawas everywhere. He would know that, oh, I shouldn't just fight them to get my stuff back. I just trade them yeah, and to get also my just, stuff back because they're all about money. Yeah, and also it just felt kind of rough that just keep murdering these, like, <laughs> beloved characters. that Disintegrating them. That, like, basically poof, just stole, poof, like, poof. a thing, right? Like, that's yeah. all that they did. I mean, yes, he's super mad. Like, super, super mad, right? But <clears throat> there's ways to deal with them. And then just running at a tank, being like, this will be fine. <laughs> like an impenetrable force, yeah. Wait, and he's got, like, what? He's got, like, so, like a gauntlet. A shoulder armor? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's that's it. It. That was the only scene I didn't really like that, in right. the early one, but, like, that's... Who cares? Like, things yeah. do that all the time. Like, that's the minor, minor yeah. quibble in the, like, I, grand scheme of things. I kind of like the chaos of the post empire universe oh yeah where everything's just like i don't know what's happening everybody's for themselves the, also like the force some people have like empire yeah. equipment <laughs> it's just laying around and like the atst it's like oh yeah those people have an atst oh, yeah. it's like okay <laughs> and they don't know really how to drive it very well and they're okay they're kind of cautious but in the end they're useless at it it's 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 funny. It's yeah, funny. and I do think that the the main character. It's just it is actually kind of fun being in the Star Wars universe and not being a Jedi. Oh yeah, especially where like the Force has become this like what the fuck like you can do everything like you can resurrect <laughs> people like it becomes this bad writing kind of thing, which oh. is a shame that the Force has become that it becomes yeah. like well how did they get out of it because of the Force the Force how it, did they know to go to this place Be because well, of the Force right yeah. like and I think it's nice to have to be scaled back to be like just this guy this mercenary with like and that's a problem with a lot of superhero films it's like how are they gonna get out of this oh it's this new power with that their... they've never used before and they've never talked about before and all of a sudden they have it's like yeah, that's that's the force right 
I don't know what that's called, yeah. but definitely it has a name in film. Yeah, it's well, it's like it's kind of like it is cheating, but it's sort of not because it's like well, I guess in this like magical world where people can see the future and like resurrect people and stuff like. Yeah. But it, but it, but it's just like that doesn't have. That's why it's nice to hang out with a Mandalorian who, if he gets shot with like a he like hurt. a blaster, he's fucked <laughs> up. Like and he and I think too like um, Jedi's are like really cool, but also like too powerful way op and and sliding yeah. scales of op like yes. you know what i mean you're like okay so you couldn't do this also i think in the new disney world <laughs> like when someone gets stabbed in the chest with like a sword or something yeah. and they and they die you're like how come this person died but, like this person didn't but but, it, but it's all it doesn't matter really like it's just no I, it's that's just what, a minor annoyances it's like yeah okay i'll forgive it again i'll let i'll let it kind of be but i think the mandalorian is definitely one of the better ones oh i did it yeah so here's my theory right i think Which it's one? the next um so there's no uh there's nothing in that one that oh, so that one have got that so that one didn't Yellow. didn't have any uh it didn't but it did before yeah well uh, maybe i'm maybe i'm out of my mind and i'm mixing them up but could be um, I always said I love all things Star Wars. But one thing I noticed with watching Star Wars shows us movies is how inconsistent the effectiveness of weapons can be. Sometimes one Jedi can fight off a hundred droids, then other times ten droids can keep one pinned down. Oh. Always depending on what the story calls for. I totally agree. Like I a hundred percent agree. Um, it's the problem too with like these. There isn't really a guiding force like like doing these shows. Like it's a whole bunch of different people who yeah. kind of writing different things. Like there's obviously not a strict bible for the universe. Yeah, and that's why I don't take any like when they people on, online are no. always like this new show destroys Star Wars. I'm like there's no mythology. <laughs> it's been long at this destroyed. Point. It's like you know it's whatever the hell these people want to do with it. I, I've been watching the Acolyte of all things. Uh, cannot recommend. Know about that. Cannot recommend it. <laughs> cannot recommend it there's no enough at the end of that sentence yeah. it's just cannot recommend it yeah i mean it's like it's it's star wars <laughs> it's a star wars it's a show thing. it's a show that exists <laughs> it's a show that has um people, jedi in people it. made it and it's not bad but it's also not oh, I felt that's the one of the, oh i didn't die a massive debate what i didn't die oh my god it's gonna be a tough go but Um, but yeah, Mandalorian's interesting. I think Big Book of Boba Fett is what is pretty rough. Like that's yeah. Well, it's just tough because it's like to do the Mandalorian and then the Boba Fett. You're like, Ooh, wait, yeah. what? And then the Book of Boba Fett has this like um, Baby Yoda, um, Luke Skywalker training sequence, oh. which you, you got to just watch that just for that alone, where they. AI generate um, Luke Skywalker's no. voice and they have an actor stand in for him oh, but then no. they CGI the face but they cut the sequences you'll love this they cut the sequences so clearly around not having to like <laughs> shoot his face so he'll be delivering a monologue like behind his head and you're like why are we not seeing him talk it's like those stunt people that always go like this when oh, they roll pretty much man <laughs> and it's like and you're like what and when you're watching like the book of Boba Fett you're like what does this have to do with Boba Fett <laughs> <laughs> oh boy and that really but I think that what's interesting about Disney Star Wars is that it really is this like um, this machine to get people to go to Disney World like that's what oh, this whole yeah. thing is now and there's nothing wrong with that like that is but that, I think acknowledging that's what it is it's not really like a lot of these they're products acts, right? yeah they're not really shows that are meant to be sort of seen as just shows they're seen as like to build the new thing it's, that, it's like music is ads for concerts now yeah. they don't make any money with the music you know, and ads for toys, ads for, you know, like, you can kind of even in those shows sort of spot. Like, I mean, if you think about it, man, Baby Yoda is like oh, the most yes. genius idea for marketing a product that oh. you can sell as a plushie, as a, you know what I mean? Like the, 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 the amount, marketers are probably like, can we make his eyes bigger? I, I, I guarantee you, um, I, I shouldn't guarantee, I don't know anything, but my opinion <laughs> is that uh, uh, John Favreau pitched the show with Baby Yoda, oh, and that's... hundred Do you know what I mean? And that was, they saw Baby Yoda, and they're like, we don't really care what you do with this show. Baby, we know that, two words, like, Baby Yoda. Yoda. And then shows a concept <laughs> art, and they're like, you got this. Because the, yeah. no, the amount of toy sales, plushie sales, like little things, memes that can be created from this 
it's like that is that is like that's a billion dollar idea and it has nothing to do with but then the thing that is the nightmare of baby yoda is ah. baby yoda can never not be baby yoda it can never, never can grow, grow up can never grow up well i think they covered that with like he's 50 years old it's like no nah, you're good oh yeah. i started over that's, that's how it goes <laughs> i'll play one more game yeah, it's my last game. game um but yeah it's really interesting the whole the whole new whole new world that, that, that is this stuff and also i just also i do feel like the target audience for the disney star wars is much younger than um than than where i'm at in my life certainly and i would say even the earlier star wars there's, films there's no swearing in mandalorian no no blood in mandalorian and, and that's where like with <laughs> a lot some, of death with, but, and i have yeah. i've had to find this zen place with some of these stuff of being like you know what this stuff isn't for me and that's okay well and i you didn't know care I mean? about like, it as well it's just tanya started watching it she says it's it's actually quite good. Yeah. I'm like, okay. Out of all of we'll them, start that, over that and... one's worth watching, right? Yes. Yeah. Because I, I just treat it as not Star Wars. I just it's... treat it as oh, it's 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 a samurai film. Yeah. Right. And See, I'm convinced worth... there was nothing, but I'm convinced sometimes that's been. Am I out of my mind? It, was it level four? Bernstein Bears or Bernstein Bears? The, the Bernstein Bears, I think. <laughs> I think, but well, I don't know. Potato, potato. Like. Yeah, that's the, the, called the Mandela effect, yeah. but not really because it was all today, not like yeah. 50 years ago or something. I swear. I'm, I'm certain. <laughs> it's more like the game's gaslighting you. That's what like what's happening. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. It was never flashing. <laughs> yeah, if the force is with you, you can fight a hundred. If not, you can't fight ten. It's correct, man. The force is the force is relative. Also, um, the other thing that I always think is funny is that it's the same. It's like when uh, she's like he's asking about Anakin, and it's like oh, in the prequels, you know, did he he had no father, and then I'm like, I'm like. What's more likely? He had no father or this lady's lying. <laughs> like, yeah. And they immediately just, they're like, I've always had that thought where I'm like, it's interesting what people take, even in like the the Kylo Ren one where he's talking to like Ray and he's like, your parents were nothing. They were just, I'm like, but how the fuck do you know? Yeah, can I give him more information? And also, couldn't he be lying? Because he's like, wants her, like, you know what I mean? It's really yeah. interesting when they choose to like, believe the somebody's word and when they and don't. not investigate ever. Yeah. I'm like, guys. Jeez. Oh. Debated again, man. And see, this is where I'm almost convinced that you're better off just going for the explosion and letting it be. You know? Uh, yeah. Could be. I do need that. Now, why can a lightsaber cut through a blast door in a few seconds sometimes, but then other times it takes several minutes? Storyline driven, 100%. Yeah, they need, a, they need that Bible. They need that Star Wars Bible to be consistent. I need that. Yeah, and Something it's just like the nature of there's so many things, you know. It's yeah. tough because it's the... Like, like you said, multiple people are working on it. For different... And it's also, like, it's evolved so much over time, you know. And it's... it's yeah. RPGs have the same issue where it's like um, as the game increases in difficulty and level um, it's one of those things where you end up like uh, you know numbers get bigger as expansions go on and power levels get higher but then at a certain point you're like well what the fuck are we going to do like everything does like 4 billion damage like now you have 9 billion health like it's like you want to kind of yeah. continue to up it but but in a way by increasing the power of the new thing you're decreasing and diminishing the value of the old yeah it's the same with gaming it's, it's like really oh hard. i went up a level and everything's harder well what's the point of going up a level yeah like, just keep everything is, the same what is this you know <laughs> Um, but uh, I don't know if you ever played the Knights of the Old Republic games, but in my opinion, that's actually like outside of Star Wars one and two, the, some of the best Star Wars IPs of all time. They're just incredible I did, fucking games. I did man. play a very early um, Star Wars game on PC. It was before that one. And I can't remember the name of it, but I, I loved it. it yeah. It was really good. Uh, KOTOR is the sort of acronym, right, to the Old Republic. And okay. fuck, is it good, man. Yeah. It's really, really good storytelling. Yeah, that reminds me of Dragon Ball Z. So true. I always did a meme of just like, we've never seen anyone go past 9,000 in the next week. They're like, he has 10,000. 
<laughs> and yep. it's like Goku's like, oh, oh my god, he's channeling eleven thousand. The next week, it's like, but someone comes up with fifteen thousand. We've never <laughs> seen anything like this before. Continuous upping, upping, upping. As we by seventeen, fourteen million. We've never <laughs> seen anything <laughs> higher than fourteen million. If Rocky gets beat by Clever Lang, then Rocky beats Clever Lang. Got to fill that hour and a half. It's hundred percent true, yeah. man. He, but dude, he's got to get the eye of the tiger. That's the problem. He lost the eye of the tiger yeah, somewhere. You know, and through in the he just, it's those silk sheets he was sleeping in. Right, he lost. He's got to get back to his roots, man. <laughs> he's got to connect back with Carl Weathers. <laughs> who was who was in Mandalorian? Remember who he who he is. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. You got this. You got this. Not that I'm at a high level or anything, but oh uh, yeah, I need health. <laughs> I need it so badly. Isn't it weird how at the end of Rocky Five, he's like, I they saw like the first one, or the end of Rocky Four, the fifth one? Oh, they what they have is they have this part of the plot of Rocky Five is it's like Rock. Taking too much damage to the head, you can't fight anymore. They can't even sanction you. And then they came out with Rocky Balboa, and they never address it. They're just like, oh, they're just no. like, oh, he's back in the. And you're like, wait, wasn't he's the whole last again. movie that he was like couldn't? Oh no. Sort of mirrors like what's going on in real life, unfortunately. Uh, a famous boxer. Yeah. Yeah. I don't follow boxing. Oh, Tell just the story. Well, just Mike Tyson is oh. potentially coming back at the age of fifty-eight to well, fight. Yeah. Um, and he he got uh, kind of like struggling to get through his training camp. That's right. Which I makes did read about that. Which makes a lot of sense, but it is like the it's the He's thing. Very old. Um. Uh, yeah. You. Right. And what, hit in the head too many times. Yeah. Well, it is this thing where it's like combat sports in particular um, are a young man's game. You know. Yeah. Very good. Suffered head trauma in the second or third movie. It was before, before he fought Drago, but wasn't it because of Drago? And he, he like <laughs> leaves the end of the like. He's like shaking. He's like, I've, I've been too damaged. <laughs> and then he kind. Oh, and then he comes. Rocky up. lore. Yeah. <laughs> I've unfortunately memorized those movies. <laughs> I know them too well. First one's really good. First one's yeah. really great. Second one's actually quite good too. Yeah. Okay. Uh, third one is kind of is like when it starts to get crazy. Although it's fun in its own way. Fourth okay. one is true eighties. There's a there's a kind of robot that his oh, family has no. and he drives in his car and like oh, 80s music no. plays he's like Rrr. and then he goes to russia and he like trains in like the woods and it's like something it's, charming about that it's really too. but that's the thing the is over the top 80s oh. movies and just like yeah we're doing it and then it just we're really, going all in with robots and fast cars that talk to you and <gasps> spec four spec four face space four but uh but like five it sort of like really falls apart and then they did rocky balboa which yeah. was which was weird, and then they did the uh, the the Creed movies. Jesus. Yeah, of uh, which um, the actor is really good in it, but they're just yeah. it is what it is, right? I'll take that. Um, but yeah, these movies definitely give a very distorted view of head trauma and what the reality <laughs> of that is. Oh, That's not the right way. Um, but yeah, they, this poor Mike Tyson situation is, yeah. has been going on. It's, oh, it's he, pretty sad. He got an ulcer, um, and so he got kind of wheelchaired off a plane, oh, and then the doctor kind of told him, like, you, you, we, we can't, like, sanction you now for this, for, you need to take time to recover, but. Right. But it's really hard to get through a training camp, man, if you're, if you're older, right? Like. Oh, yeah. Especially combat sports training, it's one of those things where you kind of need to ramp into it and be on that training and once you're off you're kind of off if you're after the age of 35 36 mm. which just makes sense right colin mcgregor has the same issue right now dude oh he was he was gonna come back for a go uh, ah a card at the end of this month and he 17. just got pulled for an injury again too oh by being just an old guy <laughs> yep. who hasn't trained in a while. There's a time then... limit on many professions and combat Cage sports. fighting is definitely <laughs> yeah, a young man's is game. one of them. Oh, yeah, I forgot to uh, oh, he's... mention the website Did... to buy the game. 
Go ahead. VVG Double Down does bring up a great point that Rocky Three has Stallone, Hulk Hogan, and Mr. T. Well, and he's a hundred percent correct. I forgot about can't, the Hulk Hogan. It's he's in there. Get more eighties than that. Oh, it's so Jeez. nuts. See, that's the thing is the the third and fourth one you just kind of gotta love because of all that, you know, all the eighties. So uh, the game is for sale. Alien abduction is for sale tomorrow. Oh, that's what he was commenting on this noon. um uh this this art that was drawn for. It, yeah, we'll take a look at that. Um that's the one that his brother did. Um does a little cycle here. So it's adgm.us. There's the alien abduction. So yeah. See if he'll stay on the page. Um, yeah, that's the art that's sci-fi. So on sale on sale June 15th. Conceived and designed for the Atari 2600 by John Van Horizon. So, features. All these things you saw us play from the creative Activision's Hero. Game consists of a spiritual successor game that takes the player into the bowels of alien spaceship to rescue an abducted princess, navigate through lethal aliens, robot guards, and armed flying drones in a race against time and diminishing suit energy to find where the princess is being held. Dodge superheated walls and radioactive floors, time pneumatic openings that can crush you if you're too slow. That's actually the least of your concerns. No, truly, things. They, they, they slow Use you down. Use your plasma though. gun? Just hell yeah, I want to plasma. Clear them out. Complete 20 levels to earn the title of hero. Reaching hero status unlocks up to 60 more levels of gameplay as you advance through that. these bones. The title of hero? Like hero. Oh. <laughs> Poke, poke. Uh, in We're not breaking copyright. No, there's no dots. So the hero had dots on it. Yeah, this so this is dotless hero. Uh, as you advance through these bonus levels, your energy is depleted Not to be rapidly. confused with hero. Oh, nothing to do with, nothing to do with hero, but yeah. you will be a hero. <laughs> but not in hero, but you will be a hero. You'll be a hero. <laughs> we don't know which one. And energy pickups are weaker. How far can you go? The status screen shows start to finish elapsed game timer for the speed runners amongst us. Every game ROM is numbered with a unique serial number. Uh, and other cryptographic features that ensure the sanctity of each collectible copy of the game. So do not share, or you'll be busted. Busted! Game contains no hardware acceleration, use no technology that was not available at the time of Pitfall, Pitfall, Keystone Cabers, and here. So cool, man. Well, in terms of programming, it is 120... Well, no, that's not true. There was... Uh, no, the largest ROM size was, 100, uh, was 64K. I don't think it was a 128 back then, but there was 64. But yeah, it doesn't use any technology. Uh, yeah, up to 60 more levels. Maybe 60, maybe 40. Depends how many you decide to create. Maybe based on how they sell. What? <laughs> oh, up to. Yeah, that is funny. Unlocks up to 60 more levels. Funny. It's like we don't know. Hmm. You find out. Game owners can register their copy of on our servers and access our worldwide high score boards. Uh, oh, somebody reviewed it. I was going to say, like, and look at this, look at this director of the National Video Game Museum, and then... Some schmuck. It's so cool. Jeez. Once again, John... Oh, you can read it. Well, there's a typo. And mine? Yeah, no, I'm kidding. It's not your fine. <laughs> I read that 50 times before I <laughs> sent it in. You just sent it. <laughs> oh, my God. Freaking me out. Uh, oh, game additions. We already know what the game features are. Some rando internet personality. No, no right. just some rando. Um, so there's three different kinds. Standard, uh, I believe that's $60. Oh, yeah, right there. Tiny, tiny. Oh, I can't make it bigger. 60 for the standard. You get the box, manual, uh, some patches that you have to earn before you put them on something. It's correct. Uh, oh, not include. Oh, you do have to actually earn them. Sorry. Not included in oh, box. Oh, dude. So you earn them. Uh, I will never. Uh, I'll see if I can earn them. I, I, I think you'll know. be able to. I think you might just have to do a few after dark episodes. Like yeah, just devote. I made it to t level twenty, but I didn't complete level twenty. Yeah. So well, you, be... you with this game, you gotta kind of just like fail like four, five, six yes. times, get in that rhythm and that flow, and then finish it. Like it's hard to. I think this is a game, and that's why like it's so addictive. Is if you lose yes. that flow, then when you come back, you're not gonna get your PB. It's definitely all about flow. Uh, and I recommend that everyone buy the VIP Collector's <laughs> Edition with yeah. all features get the hats. above. Because, like, I don't think you're going to regret that. Oh, you get the poster he's talking about. Let's see if we can find it. Yeah, that. man. Like, you want the poster? Like, I think everyone should <laughs> lean into the, the VIP Collector's Edition. Full-size poster. Oh, I don't 
Because if you're gonna if you're gonna go for it, go for it. Yeah, uh, sure. Lowest he's, he's look look at this it. the lowest serial numbers the first, first one fifty oh. like a legend of the you know what I mean like an absolute legend creating oh there's the poster sorry there it is oh it's so tiny and you could have the so, first one hundred and fifty you can yeah so like, there is a limit like is there what a are, limit like how much is it it's like one hundred and forty bucks like I like. Ten years from now, five years from now, there's no way that's that's gonna like that's an investment. <laughs> yeah, it's a QVC chopping channel right <laughs> you here. Just gotta do it. <laughs> um, oh, you get it. You do get a lot of stuff. You do get a lot of stuff. So if you want that stuff, you can you can you can buy that one. But there's a poster. It's like a woman and a green alien, alien abduction. It is a kind of a cool. 50s Ooh, poster. alien abduction hat. <laughs> yep. Um, and you get a lanyard? You, you, get a, you also get a paintbrush. I don't know. <laughs> it looks like a paintbrush. Yeah, I mean, some people said it's it's a cash grab, like double down there. But, oh, it, it, but I mean, you don't have to buy it. Oh, you don't have to. I'm just kidding around. I think it's funny. Yeah. You know, I definitely, like, grab the game. Like, but some people love, love these extra stuff. I don't have room for it. Yeah. <laughs> but some people love this stuff. I like boxes. I do have oh, so many boxes up there. Also, VIP yeah. badge, like. Yeah, wonder what that gets you. You into. want the ladies. Get you behind the scenes. If, you yeah. the, if you're looking for some ladies to 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 catch yeah. what they what they call this, the drip. That's what the kids call this. You oh, want some, is that what they call you want it? some drip for the ladies? The, the VIP, VIP badge is oh, you put that on and you enter into an Applebee's. <laughs> Trust me, <laughs> my guy. Like, or lady, you're yep, gonna your choice. You, you're gonna. Yeah. Things are gonna pop off in your life. <laughs> Maybe it unlocks up to sixty badge. more levels based on how well you play later. Chicks love collector's editions, specifically uh, Alien. Tanya tells me all the time. She does. She's like, She's I like, wouldn't have married you if it wasn't. If you didn't have those collector's editions up there, there's yeah. no way. Like, just anyway. imagine the world of possibilities with the VIP badge. <laughs> anyway, it is a really good game. It's really good. Like, I'm just kidding it's around. Like, challenging. The, uh, the graphics are astounding. Uh, the gameplay is super, super, super smooth. Um, it gives you lots of gameplay because you want to keep trying again and again. Genuinely fun game, and like yeah. just just buy whichever one you want. Like the game's really what you're here for, and like I think you know, yeah. getting this on cartridge, like playing this game, like definitely recommend. And um, you do get. A digital download of the game with... Uh, with the Collector's the Edition. The Collector's and Higher Edition. Oh, sorry. It's not on the screen. Collector's and Higher Edition. Mm -hmm. So if you do want the digital downloads, 128K. So you will have to use it with the Plus Cart at the moment until there's an upgrade. I'm not sure if it works on the um, 7800 Game Drive. That's kind of a bit iffy for some 2600 games but it works on the uh plus card or the uno card sorry uno card or plus card if you load it on through the plus store um at the moment doesn't work with the harmony encore but it works with emulators yeah. so you can use it on an emulator too so there you go yeah just really fun game man it was very cool to play oh yeah i never like i've never played that kind of um that, that flying I, platformer. I, wait, I, I don't feel know what like you'd there, call I it. I feel like there might have been, I, like, was there? I, I feel like there might have been something for the Jaguar or a higher that had a similar gameplay. Am I we, crazy? And it was almost like you were like a. Yeah. Do, do you know what I mean? Like, we did. I mean, it didn't have flying. And you drop through, and there's like a light that you can turn on or off. Yeah. It, it, what was uh, it for? And you were almost Indiana Jones as character. Am I out of my mind? I remember. Oh, we played lots of games. It's so hard to know. <laughs> I mean, that sounds like something. So let's see what's coming up on the yeah. show to, in the coming days. On f Tuesday, it looks like a Lynx Day. Most likely a Lynx Day. It might be a Jaguar Day. I have some Jaguar things yeah. that I could play. Um, but next Friday, we have some more people on the show. Oh, who's coming? Uh, Wolfgang. Wolfgang Stubig. Uh, Al Nefer will be on. There he Holy is in the shit. chat. Al, Look at you... that. His name's right there. Uh, and Marco Yanis. We're going to be unveiling something. Mm. Very, very exciting. Very exciting. I don't know if we'll reveal it before the show. No, don't reveal it before I'm going to actually show. talk with Al and see what level of reveal. Because sometimes 
you want to reveal a bit because people won't know what whether yeah. to come and watch or not. Um, but sometimes you don't want to reveal it, and it's like, oh, it'll ride enough on just the secrets. Yeah. And it's like, oh, we do want to know, right? So I'm going to talk with Al. I've got an idea, but what, how much to reveal, but we'll see. It's, it's something you do want to check out, especially if you have um, a plus cart um, or an Uno cart. Mm -hmm. It is something you definitely want to check out. Um, also, we have the exclusive world premiere of Mattress Monkeys. Sounds cool. Which is a game that plays only on the Uno or Plus cart. So I kind of coordinated those two things that happened to be ready for this. And then we have the exclusive world premiere of Mattress That's Monkeys. That's bananas. It sure is, man. It's 100% bananas. <laughs> um, <laughs> then, later on, in July 5th, we have an exclusive work in progress update of Bernie. Bernie and the Tower of Doom. So that is exciting from Money Funster. Um, and then the show after that, July 9th, we have developer spotlight on the very prolific Steve Engelhart, Atarius Maximus. Plus, we'll be unveiling his secret homebrew. Ooh. The exclusive world. I mean, there's a lot of good that. secrets happening, man. This so many big secrets. And uh, now that I've extended the um, schedule into July, I'm going to be um, slotting in uh, Champ Games, John Shampoo's Secret Homebrew. Another secret. Holy shit. Dude. Exclusive world premiere of that. He sh hopefully should have it ready by then. I know there's a bit of delay. Um, and also, I will be slotting in uh, the developer spotlight on Lawrence Stavely, Cyrano J. And uh, yeah, we might be uh, doing an exclusive update on a game. Very cool. For that one. Then later in the year, uh, Chris Walton, uh, CD-W. And I'd also like to get Albert Iruso on the show later in the year as well. Yeah, just maybe like a check in, a see. check in a year later we'll after see. Atari. Yeah, that would be great to see and the um, merge of Atari and Atari age. You see what's uh, what's happened, how things are going, yeah, how things have changed, how things have not changed, and I bet people have some questions. Oh, a wow. lot of questions for Al. It'd be a very interesting. I think it's a really fantastic idea, and also be interested to hear like even like um, in chat and stuff like how how the community feels too. Like kind of have a little retrospective. It says June. I know it says June for Champ. That's not scheduled. I need to update that um, because we've never had Al just Al on the show for the show. We've never like we've had him like little interviews at the beginning of things, but not like let's sit down and talk with Al. So it's been six years. So yeah, it's about let's, time. Let's get him on, you know. And also, <laughs> about like, time to talk with him. Maybe, maybe like if you've got, if he has some favorite games, you can, mm. you can play those games. You know, like maybe. there's ones that stand out, or it may be a game thing. It may not be a game thing. It might just be a, a, a straight. It might interview. be just talk because I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, we might highlight highlight some big. Atari Age releases through the year. Yeah, maybe and maybe like uh, hit a couple a couple little pieces <clears throat> here and there, or, or or just play some classics in the background. More interviews and games. Yeah, pretty much. Al, all Al, all day, all night, right here on Al TV. Yeah. Yes. And um, and it probably if we can schedule it just before PRGE. That might be a double hitter. It's like, oh, what's happening? Uh, what's going to come out at PRGE? I mean, it's always nice to have someone on when they have something to kind of promote oh, yeah. or talk about that's that's upcoming. It's always nice when that happens. And I try and do that, like today's interview, um, you know, with uh, John Van Ryzen. It's like, yeah. oh, he has a game tomorrow coming out. Yeah, which you can buy the VIP. <laughs> that's right. Straight to the VIP. <laughs> Get your wallet. Do ready. you want to be a VIP? This is your <laughs> Yeah. <tip>. And... Um, <laughs> Yeah, it is always better. If there's something to, like, not promote, it doesn't, like, promotion is the side yeah, like, cares, talk but... about it, right? Yeah, and especially it's something, just, something timely, right? Yeah, something that just came out. Something novel. Is coming out, is going to come out the next day. Some Yeah, something that people haven't heard before. And that's why I try and look at previous interviews uh, for, you know, the people I've on. John Van Ryzen, he didn't have any. Yeah. There's like one ancient interview, and somebody did post it in, in the chat from Digital Press. It's like quite old. Um, but yeah, I try not try not to repeat information. It's like, oh, why would you watch an interview with all the same questions? It's like watching um, actors 
Oh, and, yeah. and you watch Impress. interviews with actors. Oh, it must just drive them up the. Also, wall. actors don't have really that much to talk about either. It's like I came here, I read don't. these lines, I felt some things, I left. Yeah, you know? I I discovered that pretty quickly after watching interviews with actors. Like, I think I'll stick to the directors, producers, yeah. writers, the actors. You know, like you said, learn their lines, do a great job, head off literally to the next project. And yeah. They do like, and and for them, it kind of ends there. Yeah, and, and, like and, and it's like a year, two years later, and it's like, oh, now it's coming out. I have to remember all these and, stories. And there's certainly some actors that have <laughs> like had deep involvement in a project. Oh, yeah. But then there's most, some where you're like, really, they were there for the two weeks, and that's it, or the month, or whatever. Yeah. But, you know, actors, it's great to hear like their life story <clears throat> and their experiences and stuff. But it's sort of a different format than like, hey, let's talk about like your experience making this movie. Yeah, so with actors, if I'm going to watch an interview with an actor, I will... I more lean on who's doing the interview. Yeah. It's like, okay, this person, like, say, Hot Ones. Yeah. The guy in Hot Ones, Sean. He's really uh, quite up there for for an interviewer. And a great format for a show, right? Oh, you just get to see this it, funny side of people, you know? Yeah. Even if he didn't have the wings on the, like, the Hot Wings on the show, he'd, he'd be, be a sta- job, s- yeah. outstanding interviewer. I mean, I didn't know him back when he was doing sports stuff, because I don't care about sports, but apparently, obviously, that's why he's so good. Uh, at, and and the knowledge. Let's see. I remember the old SNL skits was Chris Farley interviewing celebrities with no prepper knowledge. The one with Paul McCartney. So you were in the Beatles. What was that like? Yeah. yeah, that is the the worst question ever. Never say. So what was it like doing blah? That's there's, terrible. There's the running joke. I think on, I may have said it once today. I'm sorry. But, uh, there, what was is the running joke on the old Norm like podcast? But where do you get your ideas from? <laughs> it's like the joke they would ask everyone. And well, when you're Norm, you can do that because he knows that. That's, it's like the anti because that is the worst. So where do you get your ideas from? It's like one of the most. <laughs> like what the hell? <laughs> like how do I answer this? Oh Norm. So we're just curious. Oh, I miss Norm. Uh, He's where so do you? Good. Oh, just a true comedian, man. Yeah. So it, he was a comedian's comedian. Yeah, maybe but, not a, pe- a lot of people appreciated how good he was. He he is his jokes were so out there that it just is one of those like, oh my god, he's brilliant. But and it so many you don't get it right away. And so many sides to him. Like I've seen a couple like um it's really like well David Letterman like performances, which are just straight stand up where he comes in and does like a very yeah. and then you see him just fuck with people, <laughs> which is like the best. Uh, you know? I went just circumstantial before he passed away really i went on a binge of norm mcdonald just oh. watched everything i could about him every interview some like canadian two hour, legend like an hour long video on yeah canadian legend an hour long video of like every interview he did on letterman and it's it was he's so good i i to this day believe in my heart that one of the greatest comedy duos of all time is conan with uh norm like there's something about conan and norms like <laughs> they're on the same the, way the way that they play off of each other and work in different sides <laughs> is just incredible oh yeah yeah they're they're both that kind of humor like uh irreverent off the wall subdued like conan's a bit in your face but he's yeah. also has this subdued humor that uh yeah hits it really well for me and if you haven't seen conan's uh, conan's um podcast he's even better oh he's great man. So what a, he what... hasn't lost one inch of it yeah, yeah. and uh, uh, someone could call him a workaholic <laughs> yes that's for sure uh, so, uh, it's going to be the O'Brien O'Brien show. If you actually like look at our schedule, right? We it's have way the down secret the homebrew from Champ Games. <laughs> There's actually a, an interesting spotlight we're going to do, which is the Conan spotlight. Yeah, if you read every seventh letter, it spells something out. And that's going to be a clue as to <laughs> when we we'll, might, might do it. Yeah. And if you are clever enough to figure that out, you message us, you let us know. Yeah, it'll reveal the coordinates and the time where you meet me, and then I'll reveal the actual time. But if you don't get it in time, then it won't happen. Yeah. So if so, you kind of got to get on this assignment right away because <laughs> you control whether this happens or not. That so if you true. can, if you yeah. can decipher this, 
it's gonna happen but if you can i'm sorry it's not gonna happen so like you get get on it like every and, and what is gonna happen we don't know what's every happen. seventh letter of <laughs> somewhere somewhere here will reveal the coordinates that you can meet james that he'll tell you the clue of where <laughs> we're gonna have our conan it's gonna be great though when it happens trust me yeah clueless gamer you'll figure it out man i i, I believe in you huge ass seven nine <laughs> that's right see you got me with that one imagine you, you discovered that a celebrity plays you, homebrew you, games you got me with that one you the chat oh, the intersection you. of a celebrity playing atari 2600 homebrew games is that you never <laughs> the Venn know diagram is like that you never because celebrities don't have time yeah most celebrities some some play games um yeah. uh, jack black plays games uh not very many so the list is very short because they're busy they're they're either working or preparing to work that's right or working out to work because <laughs> they're like a superhero <clears throat> classic norm when i was a kid my dad caught me smoking behind the garage he took me into the house and forced me to smoke an entire cigar that's when i started smoking cigars <laughs> really heavy. yeah it's that subversive live humor. long and use the force that's right <laughs> that's right hugh huge no, no you, don't you, say it he already you, he already uh, got us he got me dude uh, he got me so thanks for thanks tuning everyone. in today huge ass double down nostalgic al nefervit toko prow 8-bit poet double down shit lit la your uh coaster is on the way very soon he won a coaster june's Hell coaster yeah. giveaway last episode um br pocock carl g dan abc Vitoko, might be repeating. Gamma Dev. Old School Old 70. School. Cafe Man 2D. Xenofire, first time chatter. Atari Welcome. Warlord. Oh, Whoa. That's a good one. Atari Warlord. Tiki Dan K. Was, I remember Mad Max 2069. <laughs> yeah, he was up there somewhere. He was, he was there. I remember he, he gave us a follow. Oh, and I want to thank the people who subscribed during the show. And I couldn't say they're. We were very busy. Kabuto Pro Coder, 7, yo. Mad Max 2069. DVD Fever for following us. And everyone else for watching. Let's yeah, see. thanks so much, guys. Any other names? It's good fun. Very good fun. Procafol. Procafol. Procfl. Um, Kabuto Coder. Got good auto. That's a name I don't recognize. Um, and everyone else who's lurking. Or right. whose names I didn't say. We're going to be back. On Tuesday, if not before, we do need to get back and do some 7800 games, but um, finish the classic gaming countdown up. Yes, a lot for Shane. That is what Norm sung at the end of his show. His uh, The Norm show. The Norm oh, show. But that is a callback to a 70s Canadian show oh, of dude. a comedy duo. This guy, I love him. Of... Uh, can't remember the name it has been decades since i've watched the show but it is a callback to a canadian duo that were very silly humor <laughs> but obviously he watched it as a kid in the 70s yeah. i don't know how nor old norm is he's obviously a little bit older than me yeah yeah bizarre no it wasn't bizarre but that was a canadian that's 70s a good show guess, that man. was that's bizarre a great guess that's a crazy that's where super dave osborne came from it's, it's a canadian show called bizarre isn't that crazy yep who passed away as well it's dave osborne told Easy jokes too he was yeah. very good um so have a great weekend and uh we're out of here and we will see you on tuesday with tanya have a great great have time great guys bye. Everyone. Bye, bye bye thanks for coming to the show bye